Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. So, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys, sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God, you made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. The podcast is changing. <laughs> Who now has the strength to stand against the armies of Dustin and Mally? <laughs> I'm Nathan Simmons. And where the fuck was Gondor when the West Bone <laughs> fell? Huh? Where the fuck were they? Huh? Not here. Yeah! <laughs> Why can't I have some meat? <laughs> Dustin, that was almost the one I picked too. The one or the one Urukai who sounds like fucking Daffy Duck. Yeah. <laughs> or like one of the weasels from Roger Rabbit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh this is the Silver Lodics playlist. Where the fuck were they? <laughs> Uh, this is the Silver Logics Playlist, a podcast that will self-destruct in five, four. Whoa. Yeah. Now that's good. That's good podcasting. That is. I, I had to do some kind of celebration because... Where was Gondor when the podcast <laughs> exploded? <laughs> Where was Gondor? We're all, we're all Rohan on this side, right? We're uh, all Rohan boys. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. A second plane has hit Gondor. <laughs> oh, man. Jet fuel can't melt the white tree that's right <laughs> we're talking about the fellowship of loose change today <laughs> i feel like a celebration is is uh in order because uh we're all back that's right all the podcasts at the same time it's been a minute dustin's <laughs> here nathan's here mally's here where the fuck is gondor <laughs> you have my bow and my ass axe. i was so close to doing the gondor one i'm glad i'm glad you chose that one <laughs> mm-hmm but for new listeners, I'm sure that was just a whirlwind of confusion. Yeah. Uh, let me break it down for you. This is a Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest, or in this case, ominous endings. A podcast that tries to find out where the fuck Gondor was. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this bit keeps going throughout the whole episode. That's the only note. <laughs> I have never beat a dead horse harder. <laughs> Another one. The Two Towers. Mm -hmm. Real bold of them to keep this title sure uh <laughs> right right after uh 9 11 but um guys this is when this episode comes out the 20 year anniversary on december 18th of this movie does it feel like it's 20 years old that's crazy no that is unbelievable i gotta say i was a little disappointed when i first walked into this movie because it wasn't a 9 11 film mm -hmm. <laughs> you were misled by the name right yeah. the, the false advertising i was like oh this movie's bullshit. Where's Robert Pattinson? <laughs> Grim and Wormtongue is leading into uh, Th Theoden's ear and be like, sir. <laughs> Where was Batman when the Westfold <laughs> fell? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go ahead and skip right over our relationship with this movie because mm. this is uh, this is a classic it is i would venture to say this may very well be the movie i've seen the most in my life wow okay because my first question was gonna be why start with this one because mm -hmm. i feel like fellowship also has a little bit of a uh, maybe even more of an ominous ending it does wait hang on dustin Dustin, you have children. Where do you find the time? Oh my, th my boy! This was like <laughs> DVD era. I watched, I watched this movie on every day during summer vacation. He's like, do you know how many times I can watch this movie while Priscilla's in labor? Yeah, <laughs> I, we can at least get one watch of the, of the extended cut in there. Like we can definitely do that. No, I, I've I've watched this movie already twice this year. Wow, <laughs> so. there hasn't even been that much time in the year. It's only no, it's only November, right? <laughs> it has been a minute since. Since I've watched this, mm -hmm. uh, and because uh, I, I find myself rewatching the first one pretty regularly, but for some reason, it's always just kind of daunting to continue with the story. I sure. feel like I get I get everything I love out of Lord of the Rings, out of Fellowship of the Ring. Well, see, that's why I skipped to this one because sure. I, we don't have all the preamble. Like as much as I like the Fellowship of the Ring, the Shire stuff is just it just goes on and on. <laughs> sure, I get that. <laughs> see. I I can make it through Fellowship at Two Towers, no problem. Mm. I get to Return of the King. I'm just like, ah, yeah. fuck. Yeah. Return of the King is definitely the one I've seen the least just because it, it boy. Like, I, I, ain't got, I ain't got time for two hours with the endings. Mm -hmm. Right. And it does feel like a almost a greatest hits package of what you liked in the first two movies. Yeah. In a lot of ways. And then you get like, you know, each of these movies have kind of like the lead orc or the lead orakai. And that, sure. that one in the third movie modeled after Harvey Weinstein, by the way. No uh, kidding. Huh? Not, not. Not, not my favorite. He's kind of boring, mm -hmm. honestly. So, 
But yeah, Two Towers is definitely the movie I think I've seen probably more than any movie in my life. That's and I wild. can probably quote it front to back. But Do it. Yeah, do it right now. You want me to quote it? All right. Go. go. <clears throat> it's, it's the Gandalf. It's muffled under the beginning when they fly over the mountains and Gandalf is talking about the flame of Inur. And flame then, of Voodoo. And then he says, you shall not pass. Uh, fly, you fools. No. Gandalf! And then it's the pretty cool. Uh, we're not, we're not going to go through the whole thing. <laughs> uh, the fuck we aren't. <laughs> So, first of all, this we got to get this out of the way. We all watched the extended, yes? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't watch anything. <laughs> I would not put it past you, honestly. I ain't got that kind of time. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have kids. I don't have time to watch movies. <laughs> uh, I, I, I got no excuses. I mean, I, I sit down, son. We're watching the two towers. I, I'm, like, intimidated about this episode because I know you love this movie, Dustin. Mm-hmm. I know Mally is, like, a Tolkien encyclopedia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Only when I'm sober. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm a guy who read the books in high school and <laughs> has seen these movies a handful of times. I love them, but I'm I'm always just sort of read books, you fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I'm kind of impressed you were able to read those books. Those books, Jesus fucking Christ. Uh-huh. I tried getting through the fellowship in like seventh or eighth grade, and I was like, this is a chore. You gotta remember, <laughs> I was a theater kid and I was oh. like, there's songs in this too. Oh, yeah. that's true. Yeah, the songs <laughs> just skip right over those pages. No thanks. Nope. <laughs> I didn't make it very far in the books. So yeah. this was my first entry into the Lord of the Rings, you know, the whole lore and everything. And sure, in the movies. I know there's mixed feelings about it. Yeah. I actually pretty di- pretty much dig the the TV show, the season one. I know there's some- They're Garbage. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's some problems. There's definitely some problems. Garbage. But I, <laughs> I watched the first two episodes and I was like, I don't think this is for me. Sure, sure. That's totally fine. I will say this though. Well, Nathan, mm. in your defense, you have taste. <laughs> well, sometimes. <laughs> we, I mean, we uh, the, the listeners have heard some of the movies I've brought on this show. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. In this context, <laughs> you have taste. Okay, okay. Because I will say this statement, but then I will immediately follow it up with an asterisk and mm. say- all, uh, you know, more Lord of the Rings is always good Lord of the Rings. Mm. Shut the fuck up. There's three Hobbit movies that I would say you can, are I was, wrong. No, that's the, uh, yeah, that's the asterisk. I was going to say you can put those right in the dumpster. No, thank mm-hmm. you. One and done for me. I'm good. I like the first half of the first Hobbit movie a lot. Really? Because that's the part I am. No, like, I'm all the people showing up one by one to, f- yeah. to Bilbo's house. Oh my God. I love that shit. <laughs> oh, have you never hosted a party? God, yeah, it feels like <laughs> in real time watching that movie. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I mean. This movie that we all dig it, yes? Oh, yeah. I I guess this is a good question. So, Fellowship is your favorite, Nathan? I would say so, yeah. It's the one I've revisited the most. Mally? There's two towers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Okay, because when I ask people, I'm like, there's a right answer to this question. (laughs) I don't know that, yeah. I I think there is a wrong answer. I don't think anyone other than the Academy has said The Return of the King. See, I find that most people like Return of the King the most. Okay. It's fine. It's totally fine. I do like in the movies that they took the with where they split the movies up mm-hmm. because they took pretty much the first chapter or two from two towers and made that the ending for fellowship yes yep. yeah and then you know they moved a lot of the other like they moved some of the sam and frodo stuff mm-hmm. in to the like they kind of played with the timeline a little bit but yeah. i think adding having boromir's death at the end of fellowship was fucking great it's yeah. it's a brilliant move i mean don't be wrong in the book it's a ballsy way to open the fucking book. Yeah. yeah. But it's great. Well, the, the Two Towers stuff, too. You can, I don't want to leave Helm's Deep once I'm there. Yeah. And to to move Shelob to Return of the King is, I think, a smart move as well. I think so, too. Yeah. I, I will say my, my first real experience with Lord of the Rings as a kid was watching the animated movies. So, I watched Never the- Never seen it. Never seen it. Uh, it's- yeah, the the Ralph Bakshi movie. Uh, you know, I was like, you you can end a movie like that. Like it blew <laughs> my mind as a child that like all the characters are just in in bad shape, and then to have a different studio do the follow up film. You know, Rankin and Bass did Return of the King and yeah. sort of wrapped it up in a way more kid friendly fashion. Sure, sure. But even then, I was just I was like, this is this is so rad. They're they're gonna make a movie a movie out of this. <laughs> I remember what what year did this come out? Two thousand two. Yeah, two thousand two. Okay, so I so fellowship with 2001 then. Yep. yep. So my friend Mikey, the like he's the kid that got me into Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. and actually Star Wars. He, like I really got to credit my nerdum to him. Mm-hmm. I remember like he was the one that got me into the books. Like we all we we both read him. We fucking read the Silmarillion. We were fucking nerds. Yeah, in that's, sixth that's and seventh deep, grade. That's some deep shit. And then we fucking like we went and saw Fellowship. And as we were walking out of the movie, he was like, "Well, that movie was fucking dumb." And I was like, wow. "Wait, what?" He was like, 
Yeah, he's like, they cut out most of the story. Like, mm-hmm. so much more happens in the books. Well, of I'm like, course. It's a- <laughs> I was like, wait, what did you think we just watched? He's like, yeah, like, they didn't even, like, Fred didn't even destroy the ring. I'm like, oh, no. Motherfucker. <laughs> Bro, this is the first book. Yeah. He's like, wait, what? I was like, yeah, motherfucker, this was just the first book. There's two more coming. Yeah. There was, like, a low grumble in the audience when I saw it as a kid. Like, I remember, like, people going, like, hang on, what? Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. Like, literally, it was, like, the whole, like, it was, like, the fucking Anakin Obi-Wan meme sure. from Star Wars. It's like, like, oh, that, like, you know, they didn't do this. Like, well, hold up. This whole thing was your idea. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you're the one that got me into this. Why yes. am I explaining to you that it's three parts? Mm-hmm. Well, it was announced, too. They're doing all three at the same time, and they're going to come out back to back. It's like when I went and saw It, and then when it popped up at the end and said, chapter one, there was like people gasping in the audience. I'm like, wait, really? They, they announced this. <laughs> this yeah. was the plan all along. Yeah. And not to mention New Line. <laughs> at the end of Batman, people going, I hope he returns. <laughs> But the, the fact that New Line was like, look, Peter Jackson, we are hemorrhaging money here. We're about to go under. <laughs> we are putting all our faith in you. And yeah. then this thing working out splendidly. Well, yeah, because the only th- the only thing New Line had before this was fucking Freddy. Yeah. yeah. And Blade. That, the house the house that Freddy built. Yeah. I mean, they had Ninja Turtles, but like all that stuff was like not really getting them. It's like the house that Freddy built. Uh-huh. And then Peter Jackson covered it and just fucking semen he, he built over the the indian burial ground that was freddy <laughs> they're like please please for some reason it's taking us 12 years to make a friday the 13th sequel <laughs> absolutely yeah and it's also just insane that peter jackson got this project right mm-hmm. like uh, the guy they're like please we love bad taste and the frighteners can you make <laughs> okay the frighteners oh it slaps fox yeah but they're like, sh- can we give you all of our money to do this? <laughs> well, at the same time, Sony is giving Sam Raimi money to do Spider-Man. Totally. So it's like taking these indie horror directors and giving them these big things and both of them being successes. So I'm like, Man, and there are moments in this movie, especially where you can tell Peter Jackson loves Sam Raimi. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You sure can. You sure can. Yeah, I mean, you get the arrow tracking shot in the first movie, but this one, there's like full on deadites. Mm-hmm. There's like POV shots. It rules. Oh, there's so much Frodo making vinegar strokes that look. <laughs> <laughs> like it's some Sam Raimi stuff. Yep, it's yep. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah. All right, look. Like I, I know there's so much to talk about, and this is gonna be already be a long episode. Uh-huh. Let's just jump into it. Let's talk about the production of Lord of the Rings and the release. Where the fuck was Gondor? <laughs> Uh, so the year is 2002. When the Westfold fell. <laughs> Thank you. The year is 2002. The director, is, as we mentioned, is Peter Jackson. I'm not going to list everybody. I'm only going to list who Roger Ebert lists on his website for the cast. Okay. But it's Elijah Wood, Ian McKellen. Miranda Otto. <laughs> Vigo Mortensen, Sean Astin, uh, Billy Boyd, Liv Tyler, Christopher Lee, Brad Dourif, and Kate Blanchett. Yeah, Miss Otto did not. Brad fucking Durham. Yeah. Guys. The goat. The goat. God damn. Man, if you need a guy to speak through his teeth and cry while he, like, has hair in his face, uh-huh. that's your guy. And to stare at you with the soulless eyes uh, <laughs> imaginable. <laughs> right. Jesus. I just watched The Exorcist 3 for the first time this year. And uh, boy. So good. So good. He's so great in that movie. The budget for this one was $94 million, and it managed to gross $948 million. Oh just God. shot of a billy. Currently sits at a <laughs> Billy. <laughs> a very well deserved 95% on Rotten Tomatoes mm. and is the winner of Best Sound Editing and Best Visual Effects at the Oscars. Mm-hmm. Also nominated for Best Picture, but lost to Chicago. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Th- that was the Chicago sweep that year, right? Yeah. yeah. Chicago's pretty fucking good, guys. It is fucking great. I, I just rewatched it like last week. <laughs> <laughs> also nominated for Best Art Direction and Set de- Decoration, Best Editing, and Best Sound. Mm-hmm. And uh, last I checked is sitting at number 14 on INDB's top 250 movies of all time. Wow. Mm. I think all three broke the top 20, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, this movie fucking slaps, fellas. <laughs> I mean, it's rated PG-13 for, quote, epic battle scenes yeah. and scary images. <laughs> Hell yeah. And I agree with both of those statements. It's yeah. got some epic... I mean, we'll talk about it, but oh my god, Helm's Deep is... It's one. Of, it's an all-timer action scene. I mean, it really is. Yeah. What do you even say? What do you even say at this point? No, but, I stopped taking notes for like 40 minutes of uh-huh. the movie because I was just like, fuck, this rules, this uh-huh. rules. Like, what else am I going to write? <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool, he stabbed another guy. That was cool. 
cool. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we will tread some well trodden territory uh-huh. uh, from other shows covering it, but we're going to do it in our fashion. So, of course. Before we do that, why don't we revisit the trailer? A trailer I have not seen, I think, since it first came out. Me too. Yeah. Before the movie did. So, this will be an interesting revisit. God, I'm about to soak this chair. <laughs> <laughs> There's that new Lion logo, baby. Hell yeah! Covered in smoke. The fate of the world will soon be decided. Woo! That's one of my favorite shots in film is yeah. Aragorn coming into the throne room. Man, it it is definitely an early 2000s trailer, though. Oh, yeah. It sure is. Lots of flashes. Dark Lord Sauron and Orthan. Stronghold of the wizards. Oh, they say the name of the two towers in the trailer. How about mm-hmm. that? They do in the movie too, but it's like a, a throw. It's like a narration line. Oh, I was gonna say I didn't notice. Yeah, yeah. Even if it is technically wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's it's changed. Yeah. Who else bought a One Ring replica? Oh man, that was gonna be like my. I was trying to convince Priscilla to, for my wedding day. <laughs> oh yeah. Boy, I'm pretty sure I had a I had Sting like as a like a light up sword they used to sell at like Target or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. I uh, had an acquaintance uh, when I was a teenager when this movie came out, uh-huh. and he had a uh, Aragorn sword in this movie. He had a replica of. Oh hell yeah! And I had some fun playing with that thing. <laughs> oh yeah, those were at every Renaissance fair. I love I love his Elven dagger. Oh my god, the Elven dagger is awesome. And what a great cast. Not a lot of uh, dialogue. Ah, uh, th- this is one of yeah. This tag is so good. Oh, you could definitely see. I was about to say they they got to do the reveal because you could definitely tell that was good. <laughs> yeah, they, it's a different effect in the trailer. I mean, they show him like four other times in the fucking <laughs> right. trailer. True, true, true. Wow, what a that's unfortunate. I think that would have been a much cooler reveal. I mean, yeah. those who read the book know, but for someone like me who didn't know, what a reveal that that is. Like yeah. it is. Oh. You know what was shocking to me on this rewatch was realizing I, I, I realized that I've seen the extended cut way more times than I've seen the theatrical version. Mm-hmm. And going back and realizing how much of the, is left on the cutting room floor. Mm-hmm. That is important. You know, that's like, I I took the same note. There's so much important stuff that I need. Almost all of Faramir's character development uh-huh. is not in the theatrical cut, and that yep. is baffling. Well, yeah, because you get that whole Boromir flashback in yeah. the extended yeah. cut. Yeah, and Sam and uh, Gollum's relationship towards the end of the movie, like where Sam is trying to make amends. Yes, yeah. And that's not in there, and I feel like I really need that. Yeah. And then Faramir, same thing, like choking, like going immediately for the throat, mm-hmm. just telling him. We get John Noble not chowing down on a cherry tomato. Oh my God. <laughs> the most disgusting <laughs> shot in all of cinema right there. I dis- agree to disagree. <laughs> I think it's uh, very erotic. Uh, it is, it's erotic, but I am not the intended audience. <laughs> I'll tell you that. All right. So we get into the movie. Mm-hmm. And again, we did the extended cut. So there might be some stuff we're covering that uh, if you haven't watched it in a while or if, or if you've only seen the theatrical, you may, you know, need, need some uh, rundown on. So we'll get to that. Mm-hmm. To be fair, if you haven't seen the extended cut, I mean, c- go fuck yourself. The door is <laughs> over there. <laughs> Peter Jackson establishes the hell out of every mountain, mm-hmm. just in the same way Tolkien has to describe every mountain for uh-huh. three pages, and I love it. <laughs> and I-, I love that we start this movie with not really a flashback, but a previously on Lord of the Rings. Uh, <laughs> yes. And... The, the, just the transition going through this tiny hole in the mountain to reveal the battle with the Balrog at the end of Fellowship is yeah. so fucking cool. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to be a broken record at some point, but most of my notes are, this is fucking cool, and yeah. that's fucking cool. This but. was the first time I've watched this in maybe five years, mm-hmm. and I was watching it, uh, <laughs> I watched half of it with my dad, and then I watched the other half this morning. The first half, we're we're just seeing this, this fight scene, and when he... When Gandalf grabs his sword in midair, Ooh. I literally said, God damn, out loud. Like, it's just the best. <laughs> and the sound design of it, like, like the sword falling, going. Yeah. Like, and it's, God, it's like a fucking heavy metal album. This whole fucking fight, yeah. like the cover art, the, the shot, the wide shot of the lake. Oh, yeah. With him falling. Jesus Christ. I mean, no wonder Rush fucking wrote so many songs about this shit. This <laughs> is the most badass thing. And. 20 years later, this Balrog still fucking looks amazing. There are very few effects in this movie where I see the seams. Yes. And this is like, 
I mean, it's Gandalf performing like a God of War quick time event. Yes. Like, <laughs> you could put little best. little pop ups of like press Y now, press X <laughs> now, and it would it would fucking hold up. Yes, it just the wide shot. It's like a Renaissance painting, dude. It is the coolest fucking thing I think I've ever seen in a movie. Like, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's it's awesome. And then we get the smash cut. Uh, you know, it was just a dream. We get the title card. It was just a dream. <laughs> this little, I said the same thing watching the movie, by the way, Bally, like out loud. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I said it on the recording, Dustin. So fuck you. Joke goes you sure to me, did. bud. You sure did. This little gag, this Austin Powers gag with the cliff <laughs> being two foot feet deeper than they thought. Uh huh. It works pretty well. The Sam in this movie, mm-hmm. uh, is this the most complainy he is? You think throughout these three movies? I mean, one of his first lines is that he doesn't normally like foreign food. Yeah, (laughs) believe me, I wrote that down too. So, I mean, watching this Thanksgiving weekend, and I was just like, "Wow, it's like it's like hanging out with your relatives." (laughs) Well, not only that, but his line is, "I don't usually hold well with foreign food." He's like, "I normally don't vomit my fucking brains out if I'm not eating a cheeseburger and potatoes, Mister Frodo." (laughs) (laughs) Selfish stuff's not too bad, (laughs) And, and then. Him just saying, let's face it, Mr. Frodo, we're lost. I'm like, you guys can fucking see it, my boy. Like, it's <laughs> mm-hmm. right. You might be lost in terms of, like, the quickest route to get there, but you can see it. Yeah. You're not lost. <laughs> <laughs> Walk that direction. Yeah. Just look at where the sky is red. Yeah, yeah. Look look for the fire. Walk <laughs> in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, this movie has, like, seven separate moments where an army sneaks up on people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where, like, a marching <laughs> army suddenly comes over a hill. Yeah. Like, y'all didn't hear it. You didn't see him. None worse than when Warb Tug is like, but my lord, we had, there is no such 10,000. Oh my gosh. <laughs> orc army followed by like, oh, you mean right over here? This army? Oh my guys here. <laughs> and Wormtongue in one of my favorite little bits cries when he sees the army. It's, like, it's incredible. <laughs> it's so good. That's a good point. Since you're bringing that up now, that's a good point. Because mm-hmm. I always took that to of him being like, it's beautiful. Yeah. But now watching it i'm like it's, it's horrifying and yeah, i think he's like oh fuck <laughs> he's like i am this is not gonna work out well <laughs> like the only way that scene could have been better is he start he sees the army starts crying abraham lincoln pops out now you fucked up <laughs> you are fucked up now now you fucked up frodo's also got one of the wildest lines too in the franchise right here where he's like mm. nothing ever dampened your spirits does it sam i'm like all this dude does is complain what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> right <laughs> all sam does is complain I think that might be a sarcastic line, but... It's delivered with earnest. Well, and this is maybe a controversial statement. Oh, God. Elijah Wood is delivers the weakest performance of the movie um. of, of our of our leading characters well do you consider faramir a leading character because i think no, he's the weakest performance I, I well yeah i wish that he showed anything on his face in this movie <laughs> but yeah. yeah no i i would say of our like principal characters yeah. maybe i'm gonna side with nathan on this one really? and you know how much i hate doing that <laughs> <laughs> he's not bad it's just i, I don't know it, it look i think we need to reckon with the fact and maybe i'm jumping ahead but we I, we have to reckon with the fact that like ian mckellen might be the greatest actor alive <laughs> yeah I, and i'm not even wow. i'm not even joking i'm not even saying you're wrong but wow in maybe. almost every movie he's in he has w- at least one moment where he looks at the camera or says something in a way that makes me like shudder yeah. like he he makes me he, there are like three separate times in this movie where gandalf makes me want to cry yeah yeah <laughs> he's so good dude there's there's um there's one moment in particular that no matter how many times i see this movie I, and i know it's coming mm-hmm. i start i start gripping my chest but i'll we'll, we'll, I get a couple of those too well <laughs> we'll talk about when we get there yeah but speaking of uh, performances, no no one is outshining Andy Serkis in this movie. Like, My God. Yeah. Precious. Oh, there it is. I was going to ask you at the beginning, <laughs> does anyone have a Smeagol impression? But uh, <laughs> So I can't do I can't do his speaking voice, yeah. but yeah. I can do it when he like is upset. Yeah, I can do it too when he's like, My Precious, and he goes... <laughs> oh, no. Like when he gets, when he gets like grabbed by Faramir's men and he's like... <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Dude, the, be, be, I mean, the fucking, wait, is, the scene of him talking to himself in this movie, right? Oh, yes. yeah. Okay. A couple of scenes of him talking to himself. Honestly, the trilogy really runs together at a certain point sure, for me. Sure, sure. Um, well, you know what helps with that is rewatching the movie. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Go watch Rings of Power again, you fucking <laughs> idiot. Like, oh, how did fucking Mordor become Mordor? Oh, someone pulled a fucking lever. <laughs> fuck off. Yeah. I, I said, I, it's got problems, but I, I, I still like watching it. Sorry. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> but no, Spingo looks great. Mm-hmm. The first shot of him with the giant moon behind him. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, in fant- it's fantastic. It's an, it's an incredible introduction. And I mean, it's been set, it's been set to death, but how the fuck did the, have we not giving motion capture like artists their, their just dues? Like this dude deserves an Oscar. <laughs> there was buzz at the time. I mean, I agree, but let's give the fucking stunt people yes, an Oscar both. category first. Uh, Those motherfuckers are well over do let's do both i could walk and chew gum at the same time let's do both of those things <laughs> uh bro i've seen you walk that's not <laughs> it is insane to me that there is still not a stunt category at the oscars it's, it's insane it's insane it's it's insane but yeah no there was buzz at the time and basically what it boiled down to was a lot of people on the academy reportedly argued that uh a performance is only what you can see the actor bringing to the role and i'm just like they're literally rotoscoping yeah that, that motherfucker's on the set yeah he's <laughs> He's literally in the scene. This is this is a perfect case of just look at just him. Just look, look at look him. At, he is literally in the scene. He yeah. is on location. He is like in the water catching these fish. Like he's doing it. Just give him an honorary one now. Uh, That's award what him I'm for saying. this. Award him for let there be carnage. You know, let's <laughs> whoa, 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 uh, whoa. Di- dial it back. Okay. Dial, <laughs> dial it back, William. I mean, the, the contributions this dude has done to film in general. He's great in the Planet of the Apes movies. Yeah. Like, legitimately incredible. He really is. He really is. Caesar comes to life because of him. Dude, he's also fantastic in Black Panther. Yeah. Great in Black Panther. I rewatched Black Panther right before I saw Black Panther 2, and he's so fucking good in that movie. Mm-hmm. He's got a really good low key performance in the Batman, too. He's great oh. in the Batman. Fantastic. Yeah. And anyone who has kids know that Smeagol here with the Elvis rope around him is acting like when you ask a kid to brush their teeth, like he's just like, ah! Put your shoes on. <laughs> yeah. We have to go, come on, turn off the TV. You're just like pitching the biggest fit. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> okay. We knew this was coming. Who's who? Gollum, uh, Sam, or Frodo? Well, let me answer that right away because I already know what Mally's going to say. God damn it. I'm Gollum. <laughs> well, I thought you were going to throw me under the bus for that, but no, that fits about right. You're both, you're the skinniest out of everybody. So definitely. I'm also the biggest asshole. <laughs> the biggest whiner yeah. but also nice to me off mic so you're Gollum and Smeagol there you yes. go there you go Nathan you're Sam because you just don't shut the fuck up uh huh and I'm boyfriend goals no 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 if anything Nathan is Frodo absolutely you. Nathan is Frodo he is a whiny little bitch he's the most innocent out of God bless. he's the most innocent I complain a lot you're That's, so sweet these are valid points I accept Sam would be me in this instance I would be like ah oh, we're lost I'm hungry I gotta take a shit let's kill this guy <laughs> like that's all I'd be doing. <laughs> you're, you're right. You're totally right. Fucking elven bread, a fucking gin. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Fuck Mary, kill Gollum, <laughs> Sam, and Frodo. <laughs> well, do you consider Smeagol and Gollum to be separate entities in this instance? Well, I mean, he can he can switch. Mm. He's a switch. He's a total switch. <laughs> that's what you. That's who you fuck right there. Oh my god. Uh, fuck fuck Gollum. Yeah. yeah that's, yes. That's uh-huh. a fucking. That's a. Yeah, you gotta fuck Gollum. You you can switch that up. Uh-huh. That's like watching a NASCAR race. That's yeah. a white knuckle thrill ride. Yeah. Gollum what? Gollum likes it raw. And wriggling, he tells us that in the movie. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mary Sam kill Frodo. Uh, I'm the opposite. I gotta get to- Sam. Nah, Sam gonna take care of you. Nah. Uh, I guess that's true. Sam can cook for you. He gonna cook potatoes. <laughs> Sam brought a fucking spice cabinet with him. Yeah. on this trip, Dude. that's my fucking boy right there. <laughs> he's got a ladle, a frying pan, because he shows us his little box of salt. Yeah, but he's also got like little <laughs> little herbs and spices. His little traveling traveling emerald. Like, mo- motherfucker, you got some what? what is that Hungarian smoked paprika? What you got over there, bro? <laughs> Some Himalayan salt from the from the mines of Moria. <laughs> Black and pink peppercorns, and this motherfucker went hard. Oh, uh, you're right, you're right. I take it back. Mary, Mary for Sam. Motherfucker's just got a frying pan hanging from his belt. It's amazing. <laughs> so you know, Gollum's like, hey, I can show you the way to, to Mordor. Mm-hmm. And then also, I would 100% lead you to to a giant fucking spider. Uh-huh. That's, that's funny as 
fuck. Oh, I would kill Smeagol. It wouldn't even get to that point. I would kill Smeagol immediately. Mm-hmm. Like it's not even it's not even close. As soon as I got Wow, uh, you'd kill me? That's fucked up. Yeah. That's no, fucked um, up. I'm sorry. Immediately. You tried to take steal the ring from me while I was sleeping. Yeah. You bit my friend in the neck like a zombie. You're dead. Like I'm killing yeah, you. No, okay. I bit Nathan in the neck. Yeah. <laughs> That's not come on, friend. I'll shake that off. Multiple people have told him, by the way, this guy Gollum sucks. can't be trusted. Yeah. He's tried to murder your own family. Like, yeah. yeah. No, you'd be dead immediately. But also to couple with that, Frodo in this movie not reading the room very well at all because no. Well, they're not in a room, they're in a forest, dumbass. True, true. <laughs> you ever try to read a whole fucking forest? <laughs> Gollum says, "Hard. I can take you to Mordor. I swear on the ring." And then Frodo says, "The ring is treacherous. It will hold you to your word." And I'm like, "Uh, what? That uh, it 100 percent does not hold him to his word. No, <laughs> like at all." <laughs> And then we cut to uh, Merry and Pippin, captured by the truly ugliest and darkest creatures in all the world, the British. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, These guys are just literally running off murder oil. Like, what the fuck are they eat, drink? What what are they drinking? No, I, yeah, I was like, Merry's sick, so they pour gravy down his throat. This is like the Fast and Furious torture scene. They got the, they got the oil bag. It's 40 weight. <laughs> yeah, what what is this, Mally? Do you know as a book reader? I zoned out. What the fuck are you talking about? The, the motor oil that they're uh, pouring down. I, it's like grog. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just like fucking garbage. It looks like a colostomy bag for an orc. Like they're just pouring it down his throat. <laughs> well. <laughs> I would not be surprised if that was it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's Orkai Simon. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. That makes sense. And then one of them says what I say when I'm at the club. What do you smell? Man, Man flesh. flesh. <laughs> ah. This movie has been memed to death. Like, uh-huh. we're not going to be able to mention any of the lines. Man, Nathan, you got to get out of Florida, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to be able to mention any of the lines from this movie without, like, just, just treading through well-trodden territory. No, I know. <laughs> I, like, I'm writing, to, I'm like, how, I wrote down they're taking the hobbits to Isengard, mm-hmm. like, everything that has become a viral video. It's so wild. What do your elf eyes see? <laughs> they're taking the hobbits to Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> So, man, just, uh, god damn, Peter Jackson just knows how to shoot New Zealand. This yeah. place just screams Middle Earth. Yeah. Like, what a perfect place to film this stuff. It Every shot is incredible. It's, it's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And I'm trying not to go back to, you know, d- lean too hard on the, this is what's wrong with The Hobbit. But, like. You can. That's, that's okay. You can tell the difference. Yeah. Like, you can tell when they're in a space. I mean, have you ever seen that photo of Ian McKellen crying on the set yes. of the hobbit like yes he's, he's like i can't fucking act in these conditions yeah even even this table is green compare compare that to the behind the scenes of him on these movies and it's yes. amazing he's like making jokes motherfucker sitting in moria yeah. on a macbook he's the best it's great either doing that or he's sleeping and peter jackson's just poking fun of him and <laughs> fucking dude him and christopher lee just bombing around in a golf cart oh my yes god. holy oh my shit god. well and christopher lee bringing his annotated copies of the silmarillion to what a to legend him. what a fucking to the set to just be like actually this wouldn't happen here god what a fucking legend god damn it christopher lee the goat Guys, when when Ian McKellen's gone, we'll, we'll, we will have lost both Gandalf and fucking Saruman. I don't. I, I won't be able to take it. I won't yeah. be able to take it. Man, you should kill yourself. I, I might. I might fucking just do that. <laughs> <laughs> I got Nathan with that one. <laughs> Jesus, you kind of got me with that too. Aragorn comes out of this this little clearing and he says. Rohan, as if they passed some sort of landmark or side or anything. I'm like, dude, this is just a field. This is it. It's literally anywhere. Well, bro, did they? Did you not see the rocks they oh, walked I'm so by? Those sorry. Are, those are Ro- <laughs> the Rohanian rocks. I know these stones. <laughs> oh my god! It, and not like if that's the case, those rocks should have had some kind of a name. Mm-hmm. Like everything in this movie's got a name. When they get to later on, when Faramir is like, "Oh, Smeagol entered the Forbidden Pool," I'm like, "You made that up. That's yeah. not a real thing. You're making that up right now." These are the old sewers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that Forbidden Pool is 100 percent made up. That's some uh, bullshit. You think Forbidden Pool is a slang term in Middle Earth? <laughs> it's the grotto. Like, mm. oh yeah, no. Met him at the bar, let him into my forbidden pool, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's where that black stuff that works are drinking comes from. That's right. The forbidden pool. <laughs> you know, it's it's been a minute, so it's more like the forbidden forest. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, fuck. That's Harry Potter. Fanghorn forest. Fuck. Yeah. I, well, I, I got a lot of stuff to talk about related to other franchises of a note. Mm-hmm. Clearly getting inspired from uh, Tolkien, but we'll get there. Mm-hmm. We'll get there. Top Gun Maverick <laughs> is basically Return of the King. <laughs> 
<laughs> Although someone did point out to me that Top Gun Maverick is literally Star Wars A New Hope. Uh-huh. And it blew my fucking <laughs> mind. Yeah, they even do a trench run. Nice. <laughs> trench run. We also <laughs> learn here that like Saruman is basically a Captain Planet villain in this one. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 The old world will burn in the fires of industry. Mm-hmm. And then Don Cheadle just pops out and beats his ass. <laughs> Captain Planet, motherfucker. Dude, that along with the the helicopter and drone shots of like New Zealand, the mm-hmm. miniature work yes. in this movie is out of control. It's like just swooping up this giant tower, the ISR on two. Like it's it's God. I mean, I know you gotta do some CGI, and yeah. there are a, a few parts where some of the, like the army, like the widespread armies, do is starting to show a little bit. But mm-hmm. every other instance, like this, the miniature work is it's incredible. It's outstanding. Well, and and some of it was just like real. Yeah. I mean, it was so fucking sturdy. There's a story about like during the battering ram scene. The stunt actors were mad that the gate was so sturdy it wouldn't give way. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Well, like, I think the only thing at Helm's Deep that wasn't, like, either composited mm-hmm. or, like, a matte painting or even, like, that wasn't real, real was the Orlando ramp. Bloom's hair. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and something else with Orlando Bloom, too, that is just un- otherworldly and you won't convince me it's not composited on. Uh-huh. But anyway, yeah, the, the, I think the ramp was like the only true thing they had to like build, build yeah. because the horses had to go up it. Wow. But everything else was composited in and like it looks seamless. Like it's it's incredible. Yeah. There's only one shot that doesn't work for me. It's when they open the, the gate and you can tell that everyone's kind of green screened onto the top of the gate. Uh, but that's yeah. like the only shot. And it's a daytime shot. Everything in Helm's Deep is just it looks so good to me. Well, the one shot for me that doesn't work well is uh, and it's only in the extended cut, but mm-hmm. it's after Helm's Deep where the remaining orcs are fleeing into the forest. Oh, sure. The the last shot before, you know, you see the forest start to shake mm-hmm. and all the orcs get killed. All the little tiny CGI orcs running into the forest. Mm-hmm. It looks like a computer video game. It, <laughs> it doesn't look very well. And I'm just going to keep singing this movie's praises. The score yeah. is fantastic. Like yeah. every like creature or every species having their own sort of theme like the orcs theme goes fucking hard it does yeah with these heavy horns uh it's fucking great well and and it's so funny because last week we were talking about how howard shore was like coming up short in uh, yeah the history, history of violence, violence. Yeah. and here it's just like well this is where all of your power was going yeah like you you all you put all your best work into this and so everything else it's gonna look cheap and by yeah by comparison one hundred percent. But then we get this montage of uh, you know the industrialization, Saruman's MAGA rally, uh-huh. <laughs> appealing to the dirt people, make Middle Earth great again. <laughs> Literally, I wrote Saruman is hyping these men up for a raid on Rohan, like a certain someone hyping up someone. Yeah, you know, just raid uh, raid Edoras like uh, a certain capital on January sixth. Well, there's that weird <laughs> moment where he he looks at them and he goes, "You boys should be proud." Yeah. <laughs> And I'm just like, man, is everyone getting the World War One allegory here? Is everyone getting it? Because it's laid on pretty thick, like yeah. all this stuff. Yes, Dustin, everyone got it. Just making sure, <laughs> just making sure everyone's getting it, because they laid on very heavily. Yeah. <laughs> and then, what a king, Carl Urban shows up. Oh, man. Looking like a baby in this movie. Yeah. Like, it's wild. <laughs> I think this may be the first thing I truly knew who Carl Urban was. And Me too. And like, was like, yeah. this, is a, this is a guy to watch, mm-hmm. was this movie, yeah. Uh, and then second to that, Brad Dourif popping in like the creepiest <laughs> motherfucker of all time. As he does. <laughs> hey, Andy. Hey, Theoden. <laughs> I do a dumbbell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for Aragorn. <laughs> How the fuck do you let someone named Grimma Wormtongue? No shit, right? Grimma worm tongue in your kingdom in the fucking first place how do you not <laughs> i'm also a, a really big fan of when he shows the king's decree mm, oh and my god <laughs> it, that signature that just kind of trails off monty python yeah. style <laughs> yeah it might as well have said signed by king ah see that's that's <laughs> the first thing i wrote down in terms of some of the stuff that's cut from mm-hmm. the theatrical, I really need to make things clear because every time I watch the... Yeah, the- that's not in the theatrical version, right? It's like not. he just kicks him out of town? Well, they, it's like five extra seconds, yeah. but they cut it out for some reason because in the theatrical, it's like Grima, Grima is the one making this decision. Right. And I'm like, why does anyone justify it? Yeah. And then for him being like, oh, no, the king declares this. I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, that makes things 100% more clear. Sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's 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 basically like five extra seconds. You could have left that in, and you still would have been under three hours, right? So I don't know that stuff like that. I, th- I really would have liked in the full thing. 
Then we get to uh, the scene where Merry and Pippin are there outside of Fangorn with the orcs. Mm -hmm. And man, these Mordor orcs are such fucking babies compared to the Orakai. Mordorks. <laughs> the Mordorks. There you go. They're <laughs> fucking terrible. Got them. Why can't we have some meat? Uh, what a legend. I do. I got that voice is so yeah. good. <laughs> Just a mouthful. But Priscilla has never seen these movies until this year. Uh -huh. and that, she lost it at that orc. She's right. Delivery. God, why are you with her <laughs> well now we walk around the house just any time we're just like yeah, yeah why can't i have some extra cookies or whatever <laughs> <laughs> oh man no this this raid with the rohirrim on these orcs is great mm -hmm. i don't really mind the fake out with uh with pippin right i mean it is what it is but you know there's a couple of those in this movie lots like, of fake oh outs. no they're not actually dead oh yeah, yeah that happens like three or four times well the aragorn one is just clear as day like that's not happening no. like, at all <laughs> and it, it ultimately doesn't impact the plot at all it's just a way to ratchet the tension for another 15 minutes and get us a flashback in there yeah there's that and i actually i like where it leads to with like him on the horse seeing the army before that's true and like being the, the messenger i like that stuff that's mm -hmm. pretty good so yeah they they flag down the rohirrim and uh carl urban has maybe one of the hardest lines in this movie uh, i wrote that a lot there's a lot of hard lines in this movie but uh, the, i would cut off your head if it stood a little bit higher from the ground God. <laughs> that's good that's good <laughs> and then uh legolas being a real ride or die here immediately pulls out the glock after that insult like <laughs> yeah it's it's nuts yeah and he's like, I hey, we uh you know, we killed everybody, so your friends are probably dead. <laughs> but uh Yeah, you're well you're welcome to look through the bodies we're burning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get uh, two hobbits for two horses, not a bad trade, mm -hmm. right? I mean, they've been walking around this whole time, so <laughs> I mean I'd lose you two for a fucking horse. Oh, yeah. Of course. I'd, I'd be it'd be worth it. Yeah. Especially in this place where there's like it's all travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no no fast travel in Lord of the Rings, apparently. <laughs> so. Aragorn's little yell that he lets out after he thinks the hobbits are dead is great. After he breaks his toes on the breaks helmet. His toe. As everyone has to fucking mention every time this movie's brought up. I, I know, and I, I felt myself doing it. I was like, God dang it. I, I know, I know. But I also love this scene where Aragorn becomes Will Graham from Hannibal. Dude, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, I, I try every time I watch this movie to see if I see anything that he sees. And other than the rope. He's a rope. Yeah, he's like... A hobbit laid here. Yeah. And I'm like, really? How could you fucking tell? I don't see a goddamn thing. Well, you know, the the, the hardest bit of tracking that happens in this movie is when Gimli dr like licks orc blood off a tree. And I, he's oh like, my God. Orc, and I was like, Gimli's tasted orc blood before. A lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah. Bad dates. But I do like the yell that, that Aragorn does because it's one of the few moments you actually get him showing an emotion other yes. than like stoic yeah yeah it worked really well he does stoic <laughs> so well though yeah <laughs> he's so good the green screen work with the hobbits i think is still pretty good too for 20 years later i agree like mary and pippin standing here and like running under the horses mm -hmm. like they, it it works pretty well i do think when they show frodo and sam in the cave later on you could see it a little bit better like mm. Well, not better, but like you can see that they're kind of composited in a little bit more than you can see it here. Okay. But uh, I miss that. Yeah. It, it, again, 20 years. It, it, if that's the weakest part. Right. It's, it's, it's still doing pretty good. It feels like when we were watching Spider-Man last year and I was like, how the hell does this still look this good? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Something something about this specific time. They figured it out like mm -hmm. to not look like a joke, basically. <laughs> Then we get this uh, this hero orc, or I guess I should say villain orc, that is just so dead set on fucking eating Merry and Pippin. <laughs> <laughs> right. He he walks off a spear to the back like it's fucking nothing. Like <laughs> he's so hungry. He's so hungry. So hungry. Then we get introduced to Treebeard, the Ent, mm -hmm. and my favorite part about Treebeard is that his first line of dialogue because <laughs> he you, you realize he could speak English, but then he just sort of spits out some gobbledygook because uh -huh. he's like little orcs. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't done it in a minute. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Do you think it's a mistake to have John Reese Davies voice him as well? Because um, I feel like when I watched it this time, I was like, well, that's that's just Gimli again. Like, I don't know. I, I didn't have a problem with it. Nah, it doesn't bother me. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, it didn't have a problem with me. If that could have been a cameo, who could, oh, I got it. You know who that should have been? Matt Berry. Will Ferrell. God damn it. Good choices. I was going to say Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> 
I have business in the forest. Little orcs. <laughs> Matt Berry would have been amazing. Nathan, give us a little Matt Berry as tree bird. Little orcs. Just, just, <laughs> um, okay, what's a good line from Treebeard? You really are the most devious <laughs> bastards in all the Fangorn Forest. <laughs> we have decided you're not orcs. Oh my God, now I want this. God damn it. I never say anything that doesn't take a long time to say. Did you guys ever see when uh, H. John Benjamin Benjamin voiced Hal in 2001. Yeah. No. I, I want those people to do the same thing, but do Matt Berry as Tree Bird now. Oh, fuck. that's so good. Oh, that would be so good. I became a tree to grow leaves and fuck forever. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, give it to me. We've lost the entwives. <laughs> I, now I'm just trying to think of a way to tie in the hedges that are shaped like vaginas, but in Fangorn. Isengard. God. I buried the hobbits under my mother's vulva. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that works too well. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, nailed it. Oh, we get some more instances of Smeagol being a child. He's like, we must starve. Oh, yeah. He acts like he just ate a Popeye's biscuit with no drink. Oh, my, oh God. my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when I tell my son we're not getting McDonald's. <laughs> oh, I'm going to starve. <laughs> And then one of the unintentionally hilarious things in this movie, Frodo just fucking face planting into this lake. I don't know why it makes me laugh every time. It is really funny. Yeah. But it's also very scary. Like yeah. these underwater shots of the dead marshes. It's fucking deadites. Oh my god. They've got like they've got like those white eyes, uh -huh. like the uh, like the Sam Raimi deadites. They kind of stick out. It's it's the scariest part of the movie, I think, for me, is these dead marshes. Yeah. Totally. And they still look good. They still look mm -hmm. good all this all this time later. Then we get introduced to the Nazgul in this movie, which I mean we've seen them in the first movie, but this is first time they're in here and uh so much cooler for me than another certain franchise with a very similar uh -huh. death eater i mean uh black riders um uh -huh. yeah and it's what you know not the first and only instance of other franchises being inspired by uh tolkien's work that we're going to talk about there's there's a real big one coming up <laughs> some of them are just very blatant yeah like the death eaters are they're not even trying they are just not the dementors dementors yeah, yeah. i'm so sorry yes you're right no it's, it's just a different dumb name yes you're good <laughs> when i read the harry potter books like not when i first read them because i read them before these movies came out right. but like now when you read them before bed every night yes <laughs> oh for the longest time i fell asleep to harry potter audiobooks anyway um oh. Oh, the horrors. audiobooks are great. Fucking nerd. Of course you I do. I literally <laughs> picture, like, when they mention Dementor, I just picture a fucking ring race. Yeah. They're the same thing. They look exactly the same. Yeah. So you'd be forgiven for that. I wonder if that's how they got Alfonso. I've always wondered how they got Alfonso Cuaron to direct mm -hmm. the third movie. And maybe he, they were just like, you can do ring wraiths in this. Oh, you got me sold. So. Well, see, that's the thing. I don't think they look alike at all because the Dementors look dumb as fuck fuck in the movies <laughs> well it's all about the bling on the uh on the nazgul right oh and my like, god yeah, the claws, claws and the crowns and yeah the, the the gloves the gauntlets are so fucking cool they're so cool yeah also did you say we're introduced to the nazgul in this movie i said we're introduced for the first time in this movie i know we see oh, him in the okay. last movie yeah yeah, yeah, like, yeah motherfucker they were all up in fellowship <laughs> Oh, I know, I know, I know. Just knocking down doors and crushing motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> we get the first instance of uh, Frodo's cum face when he sees the Nazgul show up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> then we cut to uh, Gimli, yeah, the Gimli and Aragorn. Also one of our biggest departures in the books, the whole Osgiliath scene. Yeah. That does not happen in the books. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> Dustin's like, yeah, I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't know. Um, we, we cut back to Fangorn, though, with uh, Gimli yeah, trying his orc blood. And it's an old joke at this point, but since this is a PG-13 movie, uh -huh. and we are allotted one fuck, I do love... Have you guys seen the recurring bit about this? About this is where you should put the fuck? I, I remember someone saying that C-3PO should say fuck in uh, <laughs> The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> yes. They're like, if we're gonna do it, this is our last chance. Oh, man. What are you looking at, 3PO? Just take one last look at my fucking friends. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to delete my fucking memories. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> uh, fuck that movie. Um, yeah, but you know R2's cursing up a fucking storm. Somehow Palpatine fucking returned. Oh my god, that's it. Somehow Palpatine returned. Fuck. <laughs> I am all of the Sith. I am all of the fucking Jedi. Yeah, there you go. That would have been oh, it. so been good. It. And then, oh, just hit him with a bitch at the end, too. would <laughs> be great. Han Solo shows up. He says, S I guess I'm a fucking ghost now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, and I don't care. <laughs> That's my favorite interview quote. Yeah, so good. You, you guys got to stop asking two people things. You can't ask uh, Harrison Ford about Force Ghost and Star Wars in general, and you can't, you got to stop asking John Carpenter about Halloween 
Halloween sequels. You got to stop. They're going to have the same answer every time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I love the answer. Which but- I love that Harrison Ford hated how tied he was to the Star Wars franchise. Right. Uh-huh. Motherfucker had no qualms signing up for Marvel movies. He was yeah. like, how many? Yeah. Sign me the fuck up. Let's yep. go. Yeah, I have a theory about that Ooh. because he's going to be on screen for five minutes before he becomes Red Hulk. Oh, okay. There you go. That's what I think will happen, but we'll see. All right. Uh, but yeah, this is where I think you should put the fuck, which is right here. When, like, let's say this forest is old, very old, old as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. It would be perfect. Honestly, I don't know. I might give it to just after Aragorn kicks a thing, just give us a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> or, or right here when uh, the white wizard shows up and he's like, you should have been like, fucking show yourself. <laughs> I have not passed through fire to bandy words with a fucking worm. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> or Theoden at the beginning of the battle. And so it fucking Fuck it begins. begins. <laughs> <laughs> fucking taters, potatoes. <laughs> you keep your nasty fucking chips. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, so good. There's so many good instances we could come up with. Those don't sound like fucking orc horns. <laughs> <laughs> they fight beside you because they would not be parted from you. They fucking love you. <laughs> <laughs> or god. as the elven army approaches, just have one dude from Rohan look down. Oh, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no parent should have to bury their fucking child. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what a eulogy. Oh. Oh. I, wait, hang on. I know, I know it's Return of the King, but. No man can kill me. <laughs> I am no <laughs> fucking man. <laughs> that's the one. That's the one. That's a good that's one. That's the fucking well, that's, one. Well, that's for that one. That's definitely for that Wait, one. Wait, were- hang on. Pause. Uh-huh. My friends, you bow to fucking no one. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> Yes. That's it. All right. Well, now that we're here, we got to figure it out for fellowship. What's what's the line of fellowship? And my fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the line Bilbo says of like, and I like half of you as much as you deserve or whatever that line is. Uh-huh. I fucking like half of you. Like, <laughs> that'd be a good it's one. It's my 11th fucking birthday. <laughs> it will take the fucking ring to sorrow. Proud fucking feet. <laughs> Fly, you fucking fools. Oh, that's it. No, no, no. That's it. Fly, you fucking fools. <laughs> you shall not fucking pass. Yes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What's... What's the line that when uh, Pippin drops the, the skeleton down the well and gain off chest? <laughs> you fucking fool of a took. There you go. There fool you go. of a fucking took. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's perfect. Uh, what a delight. Oh, fuck. All right. That's, thanks for joining us. Like, yeah. subscribe. We done. That's like three of our selects right there. Oh, yeah. That's going to be an easy way to cut right there. Yeah. But uh, speaking of that, the whole fellowship part, this mm-hmm. is the scene with uh, Gandalf fighting the Balrog, uh, where he says... He fell through fire and flame and fought him on a mountaintop. Yeah. Dude, the shot of him catching the lightning and the sword. Fuck. I I could use a, another two hours of this fight. Like just in the book, he's like I it, like the fight goes on for months. Yeah, like he God. basically like lost track of time because it took so long. God. I, I could use another an extended, extended cut where it's just Ian McKellen. <laughs> if if memory serves, from the time they l- from the time Frodo leaves the Shire, yeah. to just after they destroy the ring is roughly one year. Damn. Shit, yeah, damn. Okay, in this in the movies, it's it, two weeks. That's what yeah. it's like two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> Gandalf has one of the most metal lines in the movie, though. Until at last, I threw down my enemy and smote his ruin across the mountainside, <laughs> and smote his. Fucking ruin across the mountains. <laughs> God, yeah. It rules. Fucking darkness took me. <laughs> God, yeah. I've been sitting back, and then, yeah, when he's like Gandalf, he's like, oh, yeah, Gandalf. That was my name. I, I was- love the ambiguity here. Like, <laughs> I, I just love it. It's so good. I was uh, I was Gandalf the White Power. I mean, uh, Gandalf the White. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to race wars this weekend. <laughs> he was Gandalf the Gray. Now he's Gandalf the White. Yeah. yeah. Why? Because cocaine's a hell of a drug. Yeah. And I do God. I do love he's just like, I'm, I'm what Sauron should have been, basically. Oh, when he says that, yeah, yeah. when he's like, Saruman, he goes, I am Saruman. I was like, oh. As he should be. <laughs> As he fucking should be. <laughs> I, w- I wish there was a scene of Gandalf, like, towards the end when they go to Isengard, mm-hmm. and just looks up at Saruman, he's like, upgrade, bitch. <laughs> nice. 2.0. <laughs> 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 
For as much extra info as they put in this extended cut, mm-hmm. there was nothing extra about why this fucking horse is so important. Like, the lord of all horses. I feel like they just make shit up. Like, the Forbidden Pool, Shadowfax is the lord of all horses. Because it's fucking Shadowfax. But wait, what, what does that mean in context of anything in these movies? Not the books. Because. If you're in a movie by Peter Jackson, it means we're going to watch an unbroken shot for 12 minutes of this horse w- running up to them. It's, <laughs> it's the- like Kung Pao. It's like the horse is never getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get Treebeard tucking Mary and Pippin into bed as he tells them a bedtime story. It's adorable. Very sweet. I'm just going to kind of skip over that scene because it's it is what it is. Um, There's a lot of that yeah. that I'm like, okay, I, like the scene with them drinking the ant water. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we uh, this makes sense to not be in the theatrical version. It's, <laughs> it's cute, but I don't need it. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we get to the the Black Gate, uh-huh. and uh, Frodo's got this cape that is apparently. I don't, so here's the thing: I never could put together with this movie. I'm assuming it's this. It's the former here, but is this cape able to like camouflage, or is it just so happens to look like a boulder? <laughs> I believe it's camouflage. Right? They describe it as like an elven cape. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. it has some kind of properties that like protect them. It looks great. Like this, the shot is. I mean, the only thing that's not believable is how the fuck these two guards don't see them in the first place uh, or hear them hear them panting right there yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, again another case of just look at this just uh-huh. look at this boulder my boulder. These, there's these are also the like gl- what i called sauron's glam soldiers oh my because god they're so good with the eyeliner yeah the, got some the, winged the, eyeliner <laughs> under those helmets the men from the east the yes, easterlings yeah. yeah those big ass elephants they look dope they do look pretty dope yeah i, I know the winged eyeliner is very uh specific <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah not uh, wing on fleek. They looked like they were going to do Dayman after this. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely going to some glam metal concert for sure. Mm-hmm. The darkness is opening up for them. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, Motley Crue is doing a reunion tour over in Mordor. <laughs> oh my god. Motley Crue would play in Mordor. That's for sure. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Tommy Lee would fit right in. He's the one that going like I feel good. <laughs> um, and then Smeagol's got maybe the most vague des- description of all time with there's a path and some stairs, and so then sick. a tunnel. And then a tunnel. <laughs> I'm like, dude, he is making this shit up as he goes. You got to kill this guy right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh, that's so funny. No, you got to see it, you guys. Oh, you know what? I, I take it back. I think my fuck would be with Treebeard on the first line where he's like, fucking little orc. <laughs> <laughs> Wormtongue negging Eowyn at her brother's death. Oh, my God. God, like... Just creeping. He's like, hey, I noticed you. Do you need some comforting? Do you want? I can't. You should be alone tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I've always been curious to know how Nathan flirted. <laughs> and uh, now I know. Okay. No joke. <laughs> oh, no. We oh, watched, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Watching this scene this morning. That with, is not a good one. That is not a good segue, Nathan. <laughs> watching this scene this morning with my girlfriend, I said, I know exactly what scene Mally's going to shit on me. <laughs> like during, I said, Mally is going to compare me. A worm tongue in this scene. This is uh wait, pause. Nathan has a girlfriend? Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. And she's very she's very real. I was gonna say, okay. did she go to another school or is she? Yeah. <laughs> no, you you wouldn't know her. She lives in Canada. Oh, okay, that makes sense. She probably fucking does live in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he definitely has some predatory behavior. This is definitely the guy that's like, hey, you shouldn't be alone tonight. Yeah. Is there uh, is there anything to the theory here that Grima had something to do with killing Theoden's son? Or is that obvious? Because the way he says, uh, oh, he must have died sometime in the night. Mm. Yeah. Like, it feels like he, he slipped in there in the middle of the night and killed this dude. Like, I know he was already dying, but like, he dealt the death blow. You know what I mean? I don't know if he, because he he's too much of a pussy ass little bitch to do it himself. Mm. I think he just kind of like he got the doctors to like not just do fuck anything. It up. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's that. I never put that together until this time. But the way he delivers that line, it's like, yeah, he must have died sometime in the night. Yeah, that's how I'm. <laughs> that's how I'm gonna die. I'm gonna be injured, and Nathan's gonna be like. Don't touch him. Yeah, yeah. Let him die. Oh, he died sometime in the night. Yeah, <laughs> Mally died. I don't know what happened. Sorry. <laughs> the banner flying off of the spear. What a good shot. And yeah, apparently happened completely by accident. Uh, like uh, No shit? Yeah, that's, I mean, according to the commentary. So 
Like apparently that whole area was very windy, and so like you can kind of tell too looking at God, uh, man, the winds in New Zealand have great dramatic timing, uh, right? Right. No, I mean it's perfect for Aowen's spirit being f- fucking crushed right there. <laughs> he has got a good line too when he pull when they pull up into Edoras with yeah. uh, man, you find more cheer in a graveyard. <laughs> Gimli's got Gimli's got a lot of zingers, oh, a lot yeah. of zingers in this movie. I, I gotta say, for better or worse, this movie kind of kickstarts. Like you can almost draw a straight line between some of the banter in this movie to the they can fly now kind oh, of dialogue yeah. we're getting in blockbusters now. Yeah, oh, the Marvel marvelification of comedy yeah. yeah the jossification of dialogue yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's getting real old real real fucking old but it's still charming here for the most part you know? uh you'd find more cheer in a graveyard than you will in those marvel movies <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure that's a fucking glenn danzig lyric <laughs> <laughs> maybe gandalf putting on his old age with the you wouldn't take my st- i mean walking stick my, like, wa- yeah walking stick yeah it's great great little bit <laughs> you have no fucking power here <laughs> The fact that they don't even try to hide like the sim- the symbolism here of like Grimma is just literally whispering in Theoden's ear like yeah. he's not welcome. Don't let him in. Remember, we're friends till the end, Theoden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then Gandalf just basically telling him to shut the fuck up. Yeah, uh, it's great. I do love like the I forget the drastic change like when he when Theoden goes back to normal. Which means that everyone was coming into the throne room and seeing this fucking zombie mm-hmm. yep. and being like, this is normal. It's yeah. normal that you're like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess, age, I mean, age, people age differently in Middle Earth. So this this seems right. Yeah. Our king is depressed. Yeah. It, that's why he's rotting. <laughs> <laughs> I love, like, Wormtongue is literally just like, he's Tony Hale's character from Veep. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's fucking amazing. <laughs> oh, man. Gandalf dropping the old cloak and showing off his new drip. Yeah. Oh, man. That shit goes hard as fuck. So yep. good. So good. And then, honestly, the visual effect of Theoden coming back from the rottingness. like it's it, good. It really holds up. Like It's, yeah. it's really gradual, but mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's it's impressive. They did, they did a reverse Matt Damon on him. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Bernard Hill also getting introduced right here in this movie. Fucking just crushing it as Theoden. Mm-hmm. It's such a good performance. It's really great. And, and he's like quietly one of the MVPs of the movie. Oh like I God. forget how good he is every time I watch this. Uh-huh. And uh, so I guess here's a question. If if Aragorn just lets Theoden kill Wormtongue here, mission accomplished? I mean... Like, do we get a lot of uh, uh, things avoided here? Or I mean... Yep. <laughs> Someone has to kill uh, uh, Saruman in the next movie. Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, Which does not happen in the books. Yes. Right. True, true. But also doesn't happen in that fucking movie unless also you watch true. the extended edition. Like, right. Saruman's dead. Yeah, Saruman just kind of vanishes in the in the theatrical cut. So stupid. So stupid. Like, well, it, like they're, the whole weakness at Helm's Deep doesn't get um, used if yeah. Wormtail dies right there. That's yeah. true. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to kill him, Aragorn, but don't get... Why they, they gave him a fucking horse. <laughs> <laughs> to leave. Yeah, maybe like, you know, like take a leg. Yeah. Do him like uh do him like uh what's his name in uh Quantum Assault. Let's just give him a bucket of oil and say, You're on your way. Good luck. <laughs> give him some of that that orc grog. There you yeah. go. Perfect. Yeah. Like we will give you a horse. Really? Semen. Horse horses <laughs> semen. <laughs> here's here's a jug. No, when they give him the, the horse, warm tub must be like, Are these guys for real? Like fucking jackpot. All right, bye, losers. <laughs> bye, batch. It's so dumb. Then we get the the Theoden's uh, son's burial scene, and yeah. the one the one line every time I see this movie, I gotta I gotta grip my chest. But he's like, "No parent should have to bury their child." Oh yeah, and I'm just like, Ugh! I mean that that whole speech is great. Alas, that these dark days would be mine. It's so good. Oh, I, the line also the line I love too of like basically like the irony that like the young die and the old linger. Yes, oh, yeah, such a good line. Great scene. He's Shakespearean as fuck. <laughs> and you know, Aragorn just standing there like motherfucker. We're the same age. I don't I know. Say, he's like, <laughs> Bro, I'm 87. I can't relate. Sorry. I'm 87 and ready to fuck. <laughs> oh my god. Because uh, like, literally, like Aragorn in the in the book lore, like he fought alongside Theoden's fucking dad. Yeah. Like Aragorn, an old bitch. He mentioned something like that in the extended uh, the extended cut too. Yeah. When he's oh, talking to right. Aowen later. Yeah. Yeah. And then Gandalf literally just doing the exact same thing Wormtongue did of just whispering in Theoden's ear. Mm-hmm. Like I think it's such a funny. Like he's sitting in the same little stool. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. You gotta, you gotta help out. There's a bit where is it? Is it Theoden says the defenses have to hold, and yeah. Gandalf look, gives him like a 
okay, girl. Yeah. Like, look, it <laughs> sorry, sure does. And then, you know, he's like, I mean, not for nothing, I don't think Theoden's a bad king. I just think he's... He's in an impossible situation. Yes, yeah, like when he pulls Aragorn aside later at Helm's Deep and he's like growling at him, he's like, what would you have me do? <laughs> so good. Ride out with me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's like, I won't risk open war. And then Aragorn chiming in with, the open war is upon you, whether you risk it or not. Like, yeah. just the putting your head in the sand. The wolves are at your door, asshole. Yes. Yeah. Like, it's, it's so crazy how relevant this fucking movie is to like just almost any time period where open war was just right on the doorstep absolutely he's like you can't just bury your head in the sand which is ultimately what he does with helm's deep sort of it's like ah we'll just go hide out here and hope hope for the best (laughs) no theoden stop the steal oh my god (laughs) (laughs) you gotta tell him to stop counting Stop counting the orcs. You gotta stop. <laughs> Wait, who is Theoden in this scenario? I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I, know. Wasn't, I didn't think that through at all. It, it all fits. Yeah. It all fits. It doesn't matter. It all fits. Faramir did his own research. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Took a weird turn. There you go. Theoden, not to be one up to either, having another hard ass line when he's like, when last I looked, I, not Aragorn, was King of Rohan. Yeah. <laughs> so good. So good. So then we get, it's only in the extended cut, but uh, is there anything Aragorn can't tame? Because he tames a horse, he clearly tames Eowyn's loins, but Ew. like this guy, Woo! this guy, man. Okay, I, I, got, I got a question for you guys both. Yeah. Yes. Pretty straightforward. Does Aragorn lead Eowyn on? Oh, I don't think so. I think he's being very polite. Yeah. yeah. I do. Like there's, I mean, t- yeah, he's he's just trying to because he I mean he has eyes for literally no one else but Arwen. Yeah. And I think that there's like this energy of I appreciate you, I respect you as a person, but yeah. that's that's all it's gonna be. Thank you for being yeah, here. Yeah. She she gives him the fuck me eyes immediately. One hundred percent. As he's taming this horse, he's like, Can you tame me, Stallion? Like, yeah. Jesus, Jesus Christ. They're looking around the horse. Yeah. <laughs> like it's yeah. like a weird meat cute. It's it's like it's literally it's like when Nathan joined the podcast. Yeah. I immediately was like, Oh, let's fucking go, buddy. <laughs> and then he turned me down. And yeah. I was like, Okay, <laughs> yep. I will destroy you. <laughs> and his and honestly, Mally makes a terrible stew. <laughs> this dude bull looks oh, she's, oh my god looks awful yeah hey, he plays it so well with like yeah, it's good yeah it's real good it's good <laughs> he tries to pour it out and just burns his hands oh my, yeah he does i saw i noticed that too it's a it's a good bit yeah that stew is so fucking hot <laughs> too much hungarian paprika <laughs> man i wish sam was here he tells uh he tells I when I was raised in Riverdale, and I'm like, oh shit, do you think Aragorn knew who Waka Flocka was? Because that's where he's from. <laughs> that's a that's a joke for the young ones. Yeah, yeah. That's a joke only if you know Waka Flocka's music at all. Yeah, I don't I don't get that one at all, I'm gonna fair, be honest. Fair enough. <laughs> so we get the, the, the stuff with Eowyn training with the sword. And dude, one of the funniest shots of the movie, when he blocks her sword and her eyes. Uh-huh. <laughs> so they are bugging out of her fucking skull. <laughs> so good. But she's got another hard as fuck line too here when she's like, the women of this country learned long ago that those without swords can still die upon them. Mm-hmm. Woo! Woo, that shit goes hard. The dialogue in this movie is so fucking crisp. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> That's how it happens when you have the rights to the book yeah. you're adapting. I know. I know. <laughs> like rings of power. I know. <coughs> I know. I know. Wormtung <coughs> spills Garbage. the beans on uh, Edoras. And Saram- Saruman damn near gets a boner when he's like, they're going to have women and children with them, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he kind of raises his eyebrow like, say. <laughs> Saruman has uh, a line where he goes, he says, Gandalf the White. Gandalf the fool. And I'm like, got him. <laughs> got his ass. Right there. Fucking burn of Middle Earth. <laughs> that's that's an old man like God Eve. <laughs> that's what that is. And then we get this this shot as Wormtongue's talking about Helm's Deep of the port on the Death Star. Oh, wait, no. I mean, uh, the sewer gate in Helm's Deep. Uh-huh. There you go. Yeah. It's, it technically is a trench run. It is 100%. But, like, it's literally a trench run. It's literally a run through the trenches. Absolutely. <laughs> But no, it's it's great because it's like, yeah, that's the one thing that would like there's this fortress is only penetrable by this one thing that no one would think to use. Mm-hmm. It's great. And then uh yeah, Saruman uh, invents gunpowder, basically. <laughs> right. And also, it's like, motherfucker, do you have more? Like, yeah. catapult that over the fucking wall. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? He uses the one, the, like, the one little batch that he can make is right here. And, dude, the the orc diving at the end is oh so my God, fucking funny. It's so fucking funny. I accidentally hit the fast forward button on my PlayStation, and it played at <laughs> 1.5 speed. <laughs> and it, it was legit like a yeet. Like, <laughs> he's like, yeet, right? 
right into the sewer grate. It looked like a, it, it all of a sudden you're like, oh, fuck, I accidentally put on Adam West Batman. Yeah, you should have put like yakety sacks over it. It was fantastic. <laughs> or it should have been what's her name from Freddy vs. Jason. <laughs> when, when she's running on the docks at the end there. Uh, but, uh, my God, that's Saruman's music. <laughs> when, when Wormtongue's leaning in, he's like, how the, how can fire undo stone? And Saruman's like, can you uh, scoot back a little bit there before you blow us all to fuck? Mm-hmm. Can you do that? Can you do that for me? It's a great little bit of comedy. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, what what we get the scene with uh, Smeagol and Gollum having their inner turmoil. What what more can be said about this scene? It's it's fucking incredible. It's exceptional, and it's I mean, for better or worse, it is it has launched a thousand parodies. I yeah. mean, but that's that's how you know it's like a hallmark in cinema. Yes, like, it's literally a scene of me and Nathan arguing. <laughs> It's also very funny. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, he's like, you don't have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good line. Such And then, yeah, it's you get so much emotion just in his eyes. Mm-hmm. Like, the the fact that it is Andy Serkis doing that performance, it's, it's incredible. This dude is incredible. I, I don't know what else to say about the scene that hasn't been said before. No, I remember I, this, this movie came out when I was 13 or 14, and I remember leaving the theater thinking, like, that's one of the best performances I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, at the time, I was like, we're not, it's not going to get any better than this in terms of <laughs> right. CG. Like, yeah. Animated characters. Yeah. Absolutely. And it really hasn't. <laughs> yeah. It hasn't gotten that much better. No. Though. Like, th- you got Thanos and Infinity War looking fantastic. Mm-hmm. And then all other CGI has been terrible. Pretty much. That shark tail. <laughs> <laughs> what? What a choice to throw out. <laughs> We get we get uh, Smeagol is now returned. Gollum's gone, mm-hmm. and uh, he brings these rabbits up to eat. But is Gollum ever really gone? That's true. Somehow Gollum returns. <laughs> <laughs> this stew that looks great. I was going to say, if you were on this trip, this would be a godsend. This fucking stew. Yeah. But then, yeah. God damn the way Andy Serkis just says stupid fat hop. <laughs> You're ruining it. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying, DC, you have some rabbits. Hey, don't, I, I, don't tempt me, my boy. That shit looks fucking delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, this scene has been memed to death. Uh-huh. Potatoes. Potatoes. Fish and chips too. Like it's great. I feel you, Sam. I, I'm always hungry for some fish and chips. Oh, love fish and chips. Love it. I just think it's funny that like that is just a staple in the Tolkien universe, which mm-hmm. I mean in, in the real world, like, of the movies, yeah, it makes sense. But it's just funny that, like, yeah, fish and chips survive. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> then we get the Oliphants. Yeah. Which are just so fucking dope. Timothy Oliphant. Timothy just Oliphant shows up. Yeah. Huge Timothy Oliphants. It's a 50-foot tall Timothy Oliphant. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is, like, the laziest of, like, Tolkienism. Like, uh-huh. Elephant, Oliphant. Yeah, there you go. Control us. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> then we get introduced to Faramir. Just a beautiful man. Uh-huh. Like, this guy... Huh, hubba hubba, looking great. And the extended cut, he's got this weird speech about this dead guy. The lie of war and how, what would you, what were his hopes? And- it's so odd because it's so Shakespearean, but it's like, dude, we, we don't even know your name at this point. You just walked on screen. <laughs> it is an unbelievably beautifully written speech that is also sort of at odds with everything else he does in the movie until yes. the last scene. <laughs> well, it's, this, this speech would have worked better once they're in Osgiliath or something. Like, yeah, the fact that sure. it's his first big moment, you're like, this dude is just, uh, you know, immortalizing on the, the woes of war. Uh-huh. I'm like, dude, come on. <laughs> anyway, how are you guys? <laughs> uh-huh. I, I, something I did not remember from this extended cut, but we're talking about the stew that that uh, that uh, Eowyn makes for for uh, Aragorn. Uh huh. Did you guys notice? Because I didn't. I never remembered this, but I noticed it this time when she first tries to offer it to Gimli. He goes, nope, 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 no, 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 I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. He just keeps fucking walking. <laughs> and then he mumbles. He mumbles. I really couldn't. Yeah. He takes one look at that. She goes, like, get the fuck out of my face with this. Shit. Is there what? There's milk in there. What is Ugh. this shit? He's like, no fucking thanks. I'll just starve. <laughs> yeah, we also find out here that Aragorn is 87 years old. Yeah, 87 years young. 80, uh, absolutely, this dude. Goddamn, looking great <laughs> in this movie. Insane that Stuart Townsend was playing this part for like a month of filming. I like, know that is out, uh, uh, so wild. They did the old Eric Stoltz with him. They're like, hey, this guy's not cutting it. Get him the fuck <laughs> out of here. <laughs> right. But uh, even like he's the only person in the world that could pull off a patchy beard. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that this thing ain't fully grown in. It's mostly five o'clock shadow and it looks fucking great on him. It does. Looks great. Yeah. He's got this dream yeah. with uh, Arwen and he's like, okay, <laughs> so <laughs> this is a dream. Then it's a good dream. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's a Liv Tyler in 2002. Yeah. It's a great dream. <laughs> All of this stuff, the, the, the dreams and the flashbacks kind of intermingled is the part of the movie that's a little clumsy to me. And I really? think, well, 
a lot of it comes from the fact that during production, they changed their minds about originally Arwen was supposed to like ride to aid in Helm's Deep. Mm. And, and they were like, well, we're, we don't want to do that, but they'd already shot a bunch of the like connective tissue. Yeah. And so that's how we get these scenes that are like, it was originally a meeting between Elrond and Arwen and Galadriel, and now it's Galadriel telepathically narrating to Elrond. Uh, and- yeah, that, that's a little bit. Well, see, the stuff with the elves, with all like the flashbacks and the dream sequence stuff, it mm-hmm. feels kind of ethereal. Like- oh, and it's and it's beautiful, yeah. and it's stuff that I like wouldn't trade for the world. But like narratively, it's the only part of the movie that feels a little clunky. That, but see, that's why I like it, uh-huh. like the way it's filmed and like how it does feel. It feels like a dream, mm-hmm. like with all the information coming through, like. Yes, I'll say it, it kind of interrupts the pacing a little bit. Sure. But he, here's the thing about Arwen. How old is she supposed to be in this movie? Um, and I'm talking elf years. That's totally okay, fine. So elf, elf years are longer? Yeah. Uh, fuck. I'm trying to remember. Because Elrond is treating her like she's 16 in 1940s France. And she's like, but daddy, I love him. Yeah, you're, I'm like, she's got to be like two, 300 years old. Yeah. Why the fuck are you treating her like she's 16? No, you, you're 16 years old. Time to go to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> when she When she met Aragorn, mm-hmm. she was like 20... Well over two thousand years old, right? So, like, why is he treating her like this? <laughs> I mean, I get, it, I get, it works differently in elf, like in elf uh, culture, but like, I don't know. He, he's treating her like she is like a, a preteen trying to go off with a twenty-one year old, which you should, if that's the case, but it's not. But my God, his Elrond's speech to her about him growing old and. Oh. You can tell when an actor relishes a monologue oh because God, Hugo yeah. Weaving is is squeezing everything out of every last syllable. Well, he's doing that. He's got the permanently arched eyebrows. Sure. Like, Fantastic brow action. It's uh-huh. so this monologue is so good. And what a what a fair point of like, hey, you could do this thing with this guy, but mm-hmm. he is going to die and you'll just be left here. Yeah. Like it is a good, a good like conundrum to put her in, and you're gonna, you'll remain on Earth. Yeah, like it's great. I loved it. It's so good. It's so sad and yeah. just a beautifully acted scene. So good. Uh, and then we get the war riders, oh, sure. Uh, and this impossible flip that Legolas does to get on this horse with Gimli, one of oh, many. Jesus fucking Christ! It's so f- like I go back and forth. I'm like, it's cool as shit, but it's also dumb as fuck. Le- Legolas <laughs> has some like wild superhero moments in the first movie uh-huh. but they're dialed back compared to the i mean you this is the beginning of we have to give legolas a, an absurd stunt in every movie it's way worse than return of the king though oh for sure this i will forgive this yeah and, and then even worse than that in the hobbit yes oh my god the hobbit one jesus fucking christ Where <laughs> defies yeah. gravity well and this one wouldn't even this one wouldn't be that crazy like oh he jumps on like he grabs onto a running horse and gets on uh-huh. the way they fucking animated it yeah. is so fucking goofy it's like something out of a hellboy movie like it's so silly i think if i remember right from the commentary it was like he had broken his ankle or something oh and they that's all like computer animated like obviously mm-hmm. like he didn't really do the stunt but oh no it very clearly is the <laughs> motherfucker bends in ways you shouldn't bend yeah yeah that's how they rectified it was mm-hmm. like him defying all sorts of physics and gravity and yeah i don't know it, it goes hard as fuck, though. I'll tell you that. Oh, it's it, dope. It's still yeah. stupid as shit. But it's it's silly. It's silly as hell. Uh, Gimli got a pretty good hard line here, too, with bring your pretty face to my axe. <laughs> <laughs> and then I love the joke of him just constantly getting just more bodies piled on top of him. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty great. It's his Jack Burton moment where mm-hmm. he like cuts that one guy's throat, and then he's just like, oh, shit, I'm stuck. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Aragorn goes off the cliff. <laughs> yeah, he just yeets himself right up. This guy, this this dying orc here, just fucking cackling with a <laughs> he took a little tumble off the cliff. It's so good. Oh man, so good. Even the minor actors in this movie are fucking bringing it. When they catch up with everyone, Gimli's delivery of he fell Oof. destroys me. Holy so good. fucking shit! It's so good. He's choked up. Yeah, yeah. Then we cut to the cave that Faramir has brought Sam and Frodo to. Oh, sure. I am Faramir of Gondor. Welcome to my fuck cave. <laughs> Thank God Frodo offhandedly mentions Boromir's name. Otherwise, uh-huh. we, may, we may never have gotten out of here. Like He doesn't mention anyone else's name, but he says, I was with uh, some hobbits. Two guys. Yeah. And he's like, uh, and then I was also with some men, Aragorn and Boromir. Yeah. <laughs> 
Like, people always say it's like, yeah, like, you know, never, like, just, you know, when you're trying to oppress people, like, don't just fucking name drop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It saves your fucking life sometimes. You gotta name drop in Lord of the Rings. If you're in Middle Earth, just constantly name drop. That's all you do. And there's not enough humans for everyone to have, you know, multiple people to have the same name. Sure. It would have been so funny if Faramir was like, that's that's crazy. My brother's name is Boromir. Oh, my God. (laughs) I would have laughed. I would have laughed so hard. Uh, And then, yeah, we get this much needed flashback. Was it Osgiliath that Boromir saved from uh, yeah. the works at this point? Yeah. And then we get introduced to Denethor in this movie, which- <laughs> The most withholding father in fiction. Dude, the asshole to end all assholes, yeah. I think, right? <laughs> like, every line this guy has, it's just, you want to punch him in the teeth. Just yeah. like, when Boromir tries to give him, like, say, hey, no, this victory is for Faramir, and he says, I know a Faramir's uses. And they are very few. I'm like, oh my God. In front of him. I can't with this guy. I can't with this guy. I, and to Boromir's credit, he's like, hey, let's, let's, hey, dad, let's step over here. Like, yeah, yeah. can I talk can to we you fucking talk about this? Yeah. <laughs> man, I, and, uh, as I'm watching this, like, man, I can only wish that this guy, I don't know, gets uh, set on fire and falls off a very tall, tall cliff. Like, I can only mm, dream. That probably won't happen. Uh, it probably won't. But uh, I can only dream of that happening, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. And yeah, Faramir's making up the bullshit at this point with this forbidden pool nonsense. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there's no sign. There's no, how do you know? There, this is just a this is just a waterfall at this point, dude. Uh, Smeagol beating the shit out of this fish is never not funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, Frodo, t- you know, kind of manipulating him to save uh, him is good. It's so sad though. Like yeah. you can see the confusion in Smeagol's face. Like again, this is such a well animated, well acted performance. Yeah, he's like a dog, like being told to come. He's got the fish in his teeth. Like, we have to go now. Yeah, oh, yeah. He looks so nervous. He's like yeah. walking with the fish in his mouth. And man, the the most haunting performance that Andy Serkis gives us, Smeagol, when he's in the cave uh-huh. and he's all crying on the floor with his back to Faramir and he's having this conversation. Faramir, his expression is perfect. The- this is Faramir's best yes. per- yeah, acting in the movie is he's when like, he's just sort of like, fuck? oh, fuck, <laughs> what is happening? He's like, what is going on? <laughs> and then, yeah, the my precious. <laughs> so good. Gollum, the throat goat. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, no. <laughs> Nathan. <laughs> It is. It was uh, weird. I thought it was weird when I was watching the credits, and it said Smeagol slash Gollum slash Nancy Reagan. I thought that was very strange. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! Um, it's the devil's music. <laughs> uh bad. Uh, Frodo getting another cum face here when Faramir inspects the ring. Mm-hmm. Pretty great. Yeah. And then, so Faramir is like, apparently, this is nothing like how he is in the book, right. but. Faramir is essentially like, he tries to go down the same path that Boromir did, but he makes the right decision in the end, right? Yeah, Faramir in the book is is much more like even-minded yeah. and just sort of like, okay, here's the right thing to do. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, but, but I like this change from the book then, because I like that you see this is what could have happened sure. if Boromir wasn't so uh, temp- tempted by the ring. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he's doing it for much, like, Boromir wanted to do it for grandeur. Faramir right. wants to do it to get back into good graces of his dad. Like... I know. I like. I like this change totally. So Aragorn sees the army and heads to Helm's Deep. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe the only time that Aragorn laughs in these movies is Legolas telling him he looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, these reunions are so sweet. Yeah. No, it, it's it's interesting because in Fellowship, Gimli, Legolas, and Aragorn don't have much of a relationship, but mm-hmm. I like how they they somehow in very little time form this bromance between the three of them very quickly all of yeah all of them do absolutely yeah. oh we talked about this a little bit off mic but uh who, who is uh, oh, okay of the trio so mally is definitely gimli uh, like it's without question <laughs> Whoa, what? you got the beard for it you were gimli my friend i'm sorry i don't have a beard anymore oh. i don't know i feel like i've got big gimli energy <laughs> I shaved my beard like a week ago. Oh, about a week ago? Okay, yeah. well... I'm just saying, I'm looking like Aragorn, bud. I am not very uh, flexible, so I can't be Legolas, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, you're... You are you are absolutely Gimli. <laughs> um, I can take that, I guess. There's no debate about that. Uh, Nathan's Legolas, then? Yes. Right? I do feel like I'm 87 years old, so that makes sense. <laughs> I'm older than All you. Right. Booyakasha. <laughs> Booyakasha. <laughs> Kneel before your fucking king. I would have been there when the fucking Westfold fell. 
Is there a more badass shot of anyone ever than Aragorn opening these doors? <laughs> that that is my one of my favorite shots in any movie is him throwing the door the doors open. Oh, one hundred percent. That if if I walk up to double doors, oh, best believe that's how they're getting open. Yes, sir. You always you just gotta put your hands on your hips. Like that's how you do it right after you open it. <laughs> So yeah, the- Theoden's preparing Helm's Deep, and man, Bernard Hill, mm-hmm. terrible track track record with helming the Titanic, that sinks, he lets Helm's Deep <laughs> get overrun. Yeah. This guy can't lead shit. It's terrible. I mean, gl- I mean, respect where respect is due, you know, he goes down with the ship both times. That's, That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I-, I also think Miranda Otto plays this scene so well. When she sees Aragorn again, you see, it's so, there's so many complicated emotions in her face. Like, sure. Especially, like, when he gets his pendant back and she's just sort of like, okay, he's never going to be mine. Like, yeah. you, you see all of that play out. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's like a, it's a weird not love triangle, right? It's right. Like, yeah, it's unrequited, yeah. I feel like if Arwen showed up, she'd be like, who the fuck are you? Like, like right away, <laughs> step off, hussy. Like, I feel like that's exactly how that would go. Uh-huh. But I do like that she's paired up with Faramir at the end of the next one. Yes. Which, it's kind of unfortunate that she's like, well, we got to pair these two up, right? They're the only ones without anybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, no, Theoden's got another hard as fuck line here, too, mm-hmm. where he tells them, like, if this is to be our end, that I would have them make such an end as to be worthy of remembrance. Yeah. Woo! That's good. This guy knows this is a failed fucking mission, but what do you do? How many lines from th- this movie in particular have been sampled by metalcore bands? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this whole movie. This whole fucking movie, damn near. Yeah. If I saw a band and, like, one of their songs started with why can't i have some meat right into a blast beat yeah 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 yeah, yeah and, and, and peter jackson excels at these silent scenes of people going to war right oh like people, God. these l- young boys being drafted into the fight and families saying goodbye to each other and you just have that unbelievable score playing over it the soldiers pulling the children out of mother's arms uh, it's heartbreaking. I, I, I got to say one thing. Mally, you might feel the same way here, but... Probably not. <laughs> my only complaint with this movie is they show all of these kids getting ready for war. I don't see a single... And then you never see them in the fight. I don't see a single dead kid in this battle. No. <laughs> it's, they they all died immediately. Oh, they were the first ones to go? Yeah. See, my, my biggest issue, and again, this is... This oh, wait, is wait, wait, a- wait. Before you say that, they put all the kids right above the sewer grate. Yep. <laughs> That's why you don't see them. Yeah. They put all the kids in the sewer. There you go. Where the children... <laughs> fucking belong <laughs> my biggest issue with this movie is mm. because it breaks so hard from lore like i don't actually mind the osgilius stuff but yeah. i hate that the elves are at helm's deep yeah i know that's like a point of contention right i fucking hate it i kind of dig it i kind of dig it shut the fuck up you like rings of power <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't bother me as at least we get like those really i mean again it also goes it goes against established lore but the you know the, the it, there's some great lines about them coming together and fighting against a greater evil and- yeah, yeah, I like it. I I get I get where you're coming from from a lore perspective, but I dig it that they're there. But I also think it ties nicely into this through line of every character having their moment of like we can't give up hope. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's good. I mean, Sam's speech at the end like solidifies the whole movie. Yeah. Oh, totally. And I, when the the elf cavalry arrives, one of the things that I love about it, it's the one silent army arrival that works for me. Yeah, they they make no marching sounds, yeah. and I think that's a really nice touch. I I, f- I feel like that's exactly how elves would march, like uh-huh. in a line, like and, and totally quietly. Totally, they'd be perfect unison. Yeah. So the Ents are talking about, uh, you know, well, well, first of all, the Ents show up and then Baron Pippin go, what is this? And Treebeard says, tis a gathering. I'm like, oh, shit. Did the Ents bring Fago? Like, are they, are they getting, <laughs> getting ready? Who brought the face paint? Whoop, whoop. <laughs> we just got finished saying our introductory whoops. <laughs> I love the when it cuts back to them and the Ents are just vibing. Uh-huh. Like, they're like, they're like swaying back and forth and just kind of going. <laughs> oh, the, Ents, the Ents also look great. Like, yeah. It's, I like the bug eyes. Oh, <laughs> man, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we, we get them talking. He's like, it's now nighttime. He's like, oh, we only just finished saying good morning. I would lose my absolute shit, dude. Oh, I would start. Yeah. I would set Treebeard on fire right there. Like, <laughs> dude, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Mary is being very charitable, uh-huh. even as he's, like, about to start yelling. Uh-huh. Yeah. God damn it. This, this is the greatest battle of all time. Yeah. Put to screen. Like, Helm's Deep. It's great. The only thing I can 
think of that comes even remotely close to being this good is all of Mad Max Fury Road. Like, <laughs> sure. Helm's Deep is the coolest fucking thing I've ever seen. And yeah. it's it's so, somehow it's so restrained mm-hmm. because they shot tons of footage for this. Mm-hmm. And I follow every beat of this battle. Yeah. I don't lose my way at all. It's It speaks volumes to the editing and the direction. And it's mostly hand to hand. Like we're not getting giant monsters. We're not getting, you know, it, it's, it's great. That's why I don't like the Return of the King final battle. It's just all over the place. Yeah, there's... We're on the fields. We're up in the city. There's giant monsters. We've got we've we've got ghosts God. just sweeping through the battlefield. Yeah, the ex, Deus Ex Ghost Army. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, this this helms and it's in the rain. It's, it is wild to have all those archers lined up right behind I, Aragorn and I the gang. Y- y'all got to have good aim. Yeah, I trust you guys. I know one of you guys are miss- is missing an eye, but I really trust you. <laughs> <laughs> Who decided the guy with the eye was an archer? Oh my god! <laughs> right. Yeah. His, yeah. his job is to just yell, now fire. Well, not even that. He's repeating, uh, what's his name, from also yelling fire. <laughs> uh-huh. And I, we got to retire the Wilhelm scream. It's time. It's time. Uh, it works for me in this movie a lot, real well. <laughs> uh, it, it's so silly. It takes me out anytime I hear it. I, I feel you, though. I, I feel you, though. But it works so well in this movie. Again, like- I hate agreeing with Nathan, but I agree with Nathan. <laughs> well, this is also a 20-year-old movie. By now, yes, we do. But in this movie, it works works real well for me right. whatever bud but because it's just like this is like a, a testament to like the whole franchise like this is the biggest thing for me that they that they did sure and i think peter jackson recognized that too because this is where he has his cameo mm-hmm. like chucking that spear Dude. with that insane battle like Rah! the golden spear what yeah. the fuck this thing's gotta have a name like why does that <laughs> thing not have a name the spear of destiny that spear is bright gold <laughs> peter jackson pulled it out of the side of christ and took it to <laughs> hell's deep I would believe you. Oh, the gold spear, that shadow fucks. Oh, there you go. There shadow you go. fucks. <laughs> the porn parody really writes itself in this movie. <laughs> I love how this battle starts because it's like the rain starts, the, the fear of doom is kicking in. Yeah. And then like, you still got the comedy because of Legolas and Gimli forming their bond here. And with counting the, the kills. And counting the kills that you could have picked a better spot and Legolas' little grin gets me. Gimli asking to be chucked yeah. and like, don't tell the elf. Yes. Would you like for me to get you a box? God damn it. <laughs> That's good. And Gimli's laugh. Gimli's laugh is so good. He loves it. How do you guys feel about the surfing scene? Okay. I like it. <laughs> I go back and forth on it. I mean, it's clearly like a pickup shot and so silly, but I, I don't mind it. I don't mind it, but what I I love more than the actual skateboarding down the steps is <laughs> sure. using the shield to stab an orc in the chest. That rules. That's the That's payoff, the coolest right? part. That's the coolest part to me. It's fine. I mean- yeah. If this was the worst it got, yeah. I would not care at all. Well, it's a holdover f- from when Tony Hawk was cast as Legolas. <laughs> ah, it's a holdover, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, originally Goldfinger's Superman was playing over this scene. Mm. <laughs> Deep cut. How do you guys feel about the orcs stomping the spears? Because I think it's fucking terrifying. Oh, it's yeah. good. Yeah. The battle cry, oh my god. And then the, the, That was they, improvised like really? by the by the stunt crew. Yeah. The, oh, these like my Maori guys who were playing the, the orcs, yeah. Like they would just do that. Well, and them cutting to then to the caves and mm-hmm. you see all the people here hearing it that's gotta be oh it's great oh my god it's gotta be scary builds such good tension reminds you of the stakes yeah which that's that seems like kind of a uh ongoing thing anytime you get like a big like group of like warriors uh-huh. in a movie together because like the stunt people kind of came up with that thing and then the wakandan chant mm-hmm. in infinity war like they just started doing that like the hey bombay yeah or whatever it is yeah, yeah. like they just started doing that and that, like the directors of both movies are like, that's fucking dope. That yeah, rules. That it's great. I, uh, and I read this story about how supposedly uh, Viggo Mortensen loved the stunt crew and just like kept like going to bat for them to get like breaks yeah. and like all this other stuff. And then whenever they were like really getting hyped up, pounding the spears, all this stuff, he would go up and like headbutt them as a sign of respect because yeah. it's like a cultural thing. And like, yeah, I just, I want to see footage of Viggo Mortensen just headbutting these fucking orcs. I, I would watch every single second of behind the scenes footage of them filming these movies and yeah. I, I've seen all the extras that are, were on the DVDs and stuff yeah there's a lot out there yeah well they said I mean they shot this battle scene took three months I mm-hmm. don't doubt it I do not doubt and it and then I think they said they cut this battle down from 20 hours of footage Jesus. yeah I believe it 
I believe it. Which is about how long the fucking battle lasted in, you know, real life. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, well, I, I love, too, that, like, the, you know, the, the guy letting the spear, go, the, the, the arrow go, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's what starts, and he's like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. <laughs> Now you <laughs> fucked up. They, they would, and so it begins, fucking. It's great. It's, <laughs> and so it fucking begins. The score just kicking in. It's, it's again, one of the greatest things ever put to film. Ever. I love it. So much good stuff here. Gimli chops a d- orc directly in the dick and balls. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Oh my god. Like that's exactly how DC would fight too. <laughs> oh, one hundred percent. I mean, yeah. they're coming up the ladder. First thing, dick and balls. Dick Second and balls. thing, dick and balls. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. Just, just keep doing that. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of the shot, of the POV shot of Holdier, like looking at his dead men. Oh. It's like a, it's, it's, it's a Sam Raimi shot, like, the sort of like tilting camera. He, he gets an axe in the back of the head, man. Yeah. I don't think it's in the. It's just in the upper back. It's not in the back of it's, his head. It's, it's not because they show his back of his head, but it just looks like it in that reverse shot. Uh huh. But yeah, no, I like, I like that shot too because it's showing the elves dead alongside the men, dead alongside the. Orcs. Works. It's like all this is trivial. Mm-hmm. Like, it's all fucking pointless. Yeah. But it's a great death. It's it gets me every time. It, it's so good. You know the elves are like, oh fuck, that's right, we can die. Oh, that's what that feels like. Oh, I don't like this at all. <laughs> Shit, is that what we've been doing to people? <laughs> fuck, I should have stayed home. <laughs> <laughs> I should have went to Valinor. Fuck. Um, fuck. the only part about this um, seat that I don't like is when we cut away from it. Elrond was making biscuits tonight. Son of a <laughs> bitch. I, I really felt it this time. Yeah. The number of cutaways to. You know, wacky times with Treebeard really kind of kills the momentum here, right? Yeah. 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 But he's like, when he comes up to Mary and Pippin, he goes, we have just agreed. You are not orcs. What, he's like, yes. And? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then they cut, they cut back to Helm's Deep and dude, Bernard Hill, never having seen a movie apparently, because he goes, is this it? And I'm like, dude, that's the last fucking thing you should say in this instance. You wanted more? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And then the elves say, on your left. <laughs> oh, ugh. But yeah, the Olympic torch running orc is incredible. And <laughs> yes. God, it's so good. Yeah. So that's all you can conjure, Saru man. So good. Good. I want to put uh, chariots of fire over that shot because they're like they're like smacking him on the back. They're like, yeah, go get him. <laughs> I want to put the Rocky theme to it when he's like, running towards <laughs> yeah. It. And then yeah, the the wall blows up. Looks incredible. Yeah, and Legolas pulls out these double daggers, and man, it's fucking awesome. Because mm-hmm. I do love him, obviously, with his bow. And he gives him that little spin. Uh-huh. That little spin move is so fucking cool. It's so cool. And you always gotta try spinning. That's a good trick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nathan got that one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is what I call pod racing. <laughs> oh God. Aragorn punching this orc right in the face, followed by him falling down with the ladder right into the army with a a. Gr- Great foley sound uh-huh. for the punch. Yeah. It's, uh-huh. it's crunchy. Uh-huh. Crunchy. It is. <laughs> Aragorn is all over this battlefield. He's yeah. on top. He's down at the sewer grate. He's in the, the orc army. <laughs> he's back up behind the gate. He's all over this place. Yeah. Aragorn is literally the I in the word team. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he gets the, he has the moment where he finally makes it back inside so he can look through the window and see the sun rise. Uh-huh. Like, like every, every major moment in this battle plays out through his perspective. Mm-hmm. Which which is, I mean, kind of great. Like oh, you yeah. stick with, you pretty much stick with one person the whole battle. It's fantastic. When, yeah. when they start, like when Theoden announces to retreat, and they cut to that shot of them running inside. If you, I don't know if you guys noticed, if you watch Legolas during that whole little helicopter shot, mm-hmm. he's firing arrows the entire fucking time. And I'm yes. like, uh-huh. I, I believe that Legolas could almost take down this entire army by himself. Like, it's so <laughs> impressive. He just about does it in the Mines of Moria in the first movie. Yeah. yeah. So it's so good. So the Ents decide they're not going to help out, and they start to head home. I do love Treber telling him, hey... Your guys' part in the story's fucking over. <laughs> that would have been a good part to put the fucking two. Like, your t- part of this tale is fucking over. <laughs> but Pippin's plan to go south into Isengard is, is great. Yeah. It's a great it's plan. It's good. It's a nice moment. Yeah. Treebeard seeing all his dead friends and doing that scream. Yeah. Oh, my God. Is that terrifying? It's, uh, yeah, it's so good. It is pant-shittingly terrifying. But yeah, Peter Jackson mm. really knowing how to combine horror and fantasy seamlessly because like the close ups here in Osgiliath when the Nazgul show up mm-hmm. and Frodo's saying they're here. Oh my God, it's so fucking scary. They're here. Yes. It's such a poltergeist moment. It's so good. 
But yeah, we cut we cut back to Helm's Deep real quick, and Gandalf shows up with fucking Carl Urban, <laughs> badass as fuck, stampeding down this impossibly steep mountain. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, it's like an 80 degree mountain. <laughs> you know, the only thing missing from this movie, and maybe it's because I, I just love the boys so much, but I want Carl Urban to just drop one C word. Oh my god. I want to be like, oi, you fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Gandalf with a goddamn fucking Spice Girls. Oh my god! <laughs> yes. No, this this wide shot of him coming down the mountain with the Rohirrim is it's out of a painting. Oh, it's yeah. fucking Gandalf gets all the cool shots, like mm-hmm. all the painting shots, and also the the tactical genius of coming in with the sun yes. uh-huh. and just blinding these sons of bitches. Doing his little flashbang attack, yeah. I was gonna say, I thought that was Gandalf using his staff to blind them, but you might be right that it is just coming over the horizon at that point. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it clearly shows the sun behind them. But yeah, okay. yeah, Well, I didn't know if that was Gandalf, like, manipulating it with his staff or something. I think it's both, right? Because, like, right before, right when they hit the front line, there's, like, another extra flare. Well, yeah. he does that, something similar to that in Return of the King, too. Uh-huh. It's a bit of both. Yeah. yeah. But no, it just heads fall fucking rolling I, I, like there's just so many decapitations in this scene. love it <laughs> love a good great. decap we love a good decapitation so love many it. love it we cut back to isengard and speaking of never getting tired of seeing stuff i never get tired of seeing the inch just stomping on orcs yeah oh. flooding the fuck out of it <laughs> one inch just taking two orcs and smashing their heads together <laughs> <laughs> like like he's playing with toys. It's yeah. fucking great. I also love Treebeard being a real bro and like congratulating Merry and Pippin on their hits. On he's their like good hits. little rocks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, because it's so funny because like they're the size of children already mm-hmm. and they're tossing rocks that are like the size of their palms. So those are like pebbles. Uh-huh. And they're taking out fucking orcs left and right with them. It's <laughs> a good point. It's like it's like the Ewoks taking out stormtroopers. Yeah. No, no, you get hit you <laughs> Yeah, you get hit in the head with a fucking rock, you down. Yeah, I guess that's true. All right, fuck it. Next ne- next time you come to LA, I'm going to throw a rock at you. We're going to see what happens. <laughs> when I was probably like six or seven, mm-hmm. I have an br- older brother that's four years older than me. <laughs> what? Really? Yeah. <laughs> this is fucking, I'm, I'm learning so much about both of you today. <laughs> He's uh, he's out in the backyard cutting grass, and I'm trying to get his attention calling from the house, and obviously he can't hear because of the law. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As a six or seven year old kid, I'm like, how can I get his attention without uh, going over physically oh, to God. him? Oh, I got we got these little garden rocks right here, these little pebbles. I'll Dustin, just- what the fuck? <laughs> 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 it gets better. I think it gets worse. I toss, I'll, I'll just toss one his way. Maybe it'll hit the the lawnmower or something. Just get his attention. Uh-huh. Nope, connected directly into the side of his fucking head. He goes <gasps> down. Fucking down the lawnmower and keeps fucking going. <laughs> he's he's down for a few seconds. Wait, was it a push or a riding mower? Oh no, it was a push mower. He Even goes, better. No, no, if it's ride a lawnmower, it could have been yeah, we could have been looking at uh the happening going on right here. But no, <laughs> push mower just keeps going. I mean it stops obviously because he's not holding the thing down. But yeah, he goes down immediately. Holy shit. And uh yeah, I don't think he's been right ever since then. <laughs> wow. Yeah. See, my older brother once shot me point blank range with a BB gun, Mm. but then also he beat me over the head with a hairbrush until my head gushed blood on the school bus one day. What the fuck? Did he also tell you to drink more Ovaltine (laughs) after he did that? No, I mean, hey, in his defense, I mean- he takes full he takes full blame for the BB gun. Uh-huh. He did not check to see if there was one in the chamber. And I told him there's fucking one in the chamber, bro. He was like, no, there isn't. Put it on my leg. Pop me in the leg. Still in my knee. I deserve the hairbrush thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I called his girlfriend a hoe. Oh, okay. oh, wow. I mean, in my defense, I was right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uncalled for. Sure, sure. None of the moments, though, with these ends can even compare, though, to the one that gets set on fire that then sprints in out of frame oh, yeah. to put his flaming head out in the river. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's such a good little, like, gag to put in this, this horrific fucking battle. That, that int played by uh, Joe Pesci. <laughs> He's like, (laughs) he's got a big M uh, burn into the side of his bark. Frodo under the effects of the ring, just standing there as the ring wraith hovers out in front of him. It's good. Oh my God. It's, it's, there's not damn near a shot wasted in this movie. Mm -hmm. Everything is so fucking purposeful. Which is so insane for a movie that's pushing four hours. And and it's of this scale and to do it three times. Like it's these movies, I know rightfully get their just dues, but I even still, I feel like they don't get enough respect because everything is perfect in this movie like Mm -hmm. in the all three of these for the most part everything is firing the worst part of them is the length like (laughs) that's really the worst part is just they're so long yeah but i don't know this one in particular everything works for me for the most part 
And then, yeah, Sam tackles him just at the last moment. Uh, Frodo pulling Sting on Sam. God damn. It's me. Ooh. It's your Sam destroys me. Oh, mm. God. It's so, this whole scene is so good. The speech is unbelievable. I, it's, it's, it's perfection. The, the slow mo of Frodo realizing he's got a sword pull, pulled out on his friend's throat. His best friend. Yeah. Dropping it, the clanging of the sword. And he's just like, I can't do this, Sam. Oh. And even Gollum is moved by this. Yes. Oh, the speech is so good. And like, I feel like you get more cutaways during the extended cut. Yeah. Because like, Sam's giving this emotional speech. And somehow it avoids being the cheesiest thing of all time. Yes. And Smeagol hearing it and you watch him realize, oh, that's a world I could never be a part of. Uh, absolutely. It's tough. It's so heartbreaking. <laughs> Meanwhile, Merry and Pippin are gathering up apples and wet chicken and weed. Uh, oh my God. The wet chicken. Oh, my boys <laughs> in that gray water. Oh, no, thanks. I don't want diarrhea. I don't want to die from sepsis and, and <laughs> after I just experienced all this in Middle Earth. Yeah. And then Faramir, we come back to Osgiliath and Faramir's right hand going like, if you let them go, your life will be forfeit. And I'm just thinking, or you, y'all could just learn to keep your fucking mouths shut. That's right. what that could also you be You don't done. have to tell him. Yeah. You guys know Denethor's an asshole. Yeah. Don't be a fucking narc. You don't have to do that. <laughs> I love that guy too. I don't know his name, but his Faramir's like right hand guy is, uh-huh. is fucking down for the count. Like that dude is down. I love him. And then yeah, they, they, we cut back to Helm's Deep, and the last of these orcs fling into the forest to get handled. Mm. It's a good scene, but like I said, it, it looks like a computer game from the '90s at this <laughs> point. Now it, it's the one shot for me that doesn't really hold up with the CG. Sure. Another little comedy scene here where uh, we find out that Gimli actually won the contest by one kill. Uh huh. And Legolas firing into the guy he's sitting on. It's like he twitched. He's twitching because he's got my axe and his nervous system. Nervous. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty good. And the body is, like, the arm is, like, kind of jiggling underneath uh-huh. him, too. It's so good. Uh-huh. Uh, I do like, we we kind of skipped over, but, yeah, when he's, like, when they find the pipe weed at Isengard. Oh, and yeah. Like, should we, Mary's like, should we share it? And he's like, ah, oh, that could be a distant relative. Yeah. <laughs> Treebeard wouldn't understand. Yeah. That's a good lie. He's like, mm, nah, we shouldn't even mention it to him. So yeah, Faramir really decides he's going to release uh, Frodo and Sam and Smeagol and let the ring go. And then when he finds out where Smeagol's taking them, immediately go for this throat. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> and then, yeah, a scene that I really could have used in the theatrical cut is him saying, Mr. Frodo didn't mean for those rangers to hurt you. You have to understand that. Like, Sam- You know that, right? Like, yeah. Sam trying to extend an olive branch. Mm-hmm. It's Because in the theatrical cuts for all these, there's not a single second where he gives No, him- he gives him no quarter. None. <laughs> like, <laughs> absolutely. None. I really could have used that to-, to sh- Really further, like, solidify how gone Gollum is at that point. Like, Yeah, totally. Yeah. And then, it, it, you know, it's been joked about to death, but when they're walking through the woods and Frodo says, Frodo wouldn't have gotten far without his Sam. I'm just like, mm-hmm. kiss. The sexual tension between you two, just kiss. There's so many scenes, in this one and the next one, where I'm just like, you guys are made for each other, and I'm not even doing a bit. No, you guys would be such a cute couple. Absolutely. Just fucking kiss already. <laughs> and then, yeah, Samwise the Brave. So sweet. I love it. Such a good little moment here. It's a great... The ending of this movie, like, for all the... the, the uh, build up to the next one mm-hmm. with the Smeagol stuff here at the end. It's a great, we leave a great, in a great spot. Mm-hmm. I, I guess I should recap. Yeah. The, Frodo and Sam and Smeagol get, uh, get sent out of, of Osgiliath to head on to get the ring to Mordor. Gandalf obviously showed up to Helm's Deep. He's there with all the crew and saying like the battle for Helm's Deep's over, but the battle for Middle Earth has just begun. We got to head now head to Minas Tirith, basically. The Ents having now desolated Isengard and got Saruman trapped up in his tower. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone's at a good spot at the end of this movie, for the most part. And then, we have, yeah, we have another... Like It's in the daytime. <laughs> it's a tracking... Sh- it's like a two to three minute wonder. Yeah. Of just tracking this non-existent character, for the most part, through these woods. Arguing with himself. Uh-huh. And Gollum coming back. Mm-hmm. He's telling him, look, I told you that your master would lie. That's why you got caught and beat by Faramir and his men. And then, yeah, the, a good line where he's like, uh, S. Smeagol, the eyes are always watching. And as Gollum saying, then we stab them out. I was like, oof. It's good. It's real good. And then, as someone who didn't read the books uh-huh. at this point and didn't know what was coming next, the little, like, whisper to himself of, we could let her do it. Oh, oof. sure. Chills. Chills, man. It's It was fucking good. And even now, knowing what's coming next, that line is still so scary mm-hmm. and 
the reason we're doing this episode on the show. It is so ominous. Yes. There's there's a great fan edit out there where after he says that line, it just cuts to Jason Bateman in, in Arrested Development going, her? <laughs> <laughs> and a good pairing with the ending of Fellowship where you see how far they have to travel. Yes. And here in the Two Towers, seeing they're right there. Like, Mordor is right there. The music, not cheerful at all. It's no. very, like, uh, it almost sounds like Galadriel kind of doing, like, a low hum uh-huh. it's fucking good like and it's just a, a solemn fade to black mm-hmm. it's it's very much like uh almost like an empire strikes back like yeah yes we survived but at what cost what's still to come like it's a great ending yeah. it's a really good ending, and it still somehow feels like a complete movie yes like even knowing that there's still so much to go so like so much mileage to travel like i don't know it works really well for me i feel the same way about fellowship like i i think it's such a good the standalone story even though mm-hmm. you know there's definitely more to come you you know that these characters are going to stick it out together well, well unless you're those audience members you talked about earlier that didn't realize this was <laughs> or mally's friend that didn't realize more were coming <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah sure but no i again this is my favorite of these mm-hmm. these three movies i we will do fellowship at some point on the show but yeah i i this is the one i come back to all the time it's it deserves to be in the top 10 of all time mm-hmm. it, like all three of these movies deserve to be in the top 20 at the very least and yeah, I get, like, like I said before, Helm's Deep is one of the best things put to film, period. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's masterful. I totally agree. No other sword and sandals fighting epic thing I've ever seen has come close. Mm-hmm. Like, it just hasn't. I guess we can do that. We can go around the horn now since we're I'm talking recommendations. I obviously do, uh, and I'm sure you guys do as well, but any final notes about the movie itself? Yeah, um... Helm's Deep was a false flag operation. Uh, <laughs> <and> <laughs> oh, you were holding on for that one, weren't you? Uh, I no, I I love this movie. How did Nathan beat me to that fucking joke? <laughs> <laughs> Helm's Deep never happened. Oh yeah, God, it's it's sour on me. Like they're liars, they're losers. <laughs> Orcs are gonna get so tired of winning. <laughs> a lot of people are saying uh-huh. that the ring has been destroyed. Uh huh. Oh, and then Worm Tongue is Pence by far, by the oh, way. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mother. Yeah. Orcs, orcs are like bringing up guillotine, saying we bring out, bring out Worm Tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> ah, anyway. No, I, I love this movie. I, I was so excited to revisit it for the podcast, and now I feel like I, I owe it to myself to just rewatch the trilogy because I... It, Man, I I forgot how great these are. I mean, it's, I mean, you if if you're not trilling it up like once a year, you're yeah. doing something wrong. You know, it's, it's at least a once a year. And I real I really need to. Yeah, yeah, I really need to start doing Especially that. Especially that like the the leaves are falling, Tim's mm-hmm. dropping. Let's fucking go. Well, not in Florida. It's like 95 degrees where you guys live. <laughs> yeah, I'm dying. Yeah, yeah. No, this this is this is a Christmas time watch for me not on christmas day necessarily but in the month of december yeah is usually when i revisit these see this is more of a thanksgiving jam for me yeah 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 no i, I fall fall in general fall yeah. and winter yeah. you put these on around the holidays it's a good fucking and it's a it's an ass magnet like <laughs> wow. you start watching it somebody's walking through the living room they're like hey what are you watching oh lord of the rings they're, they're sitting down oh Those yeah people are getting <laughs> invested as well oh that's what you meant by ass magnet yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh you're watching lord of the rings glock 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 oh no i'm opening my <laughs> asshole and hoping the movie gets put in yeah that's what we're talking about. i thought you were saying like oh yeah dude like lord lord of the rings fans we pull ass you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. oh see i thought you were saying like i was the thanksgiving turkey and the movie is the stuffing like it's just going right in my <laughs> what <laughs> yep yep no that's what i meant <laughs> what i'm sorry nathan you were saying yeah, yeah, yeah. you were saying no i so well, th- <laughs> i don't even know anymore so like uh, like y'all y'all like uh, like oh okay i feel you knocking but then y'all let me in the back door like mm-hmm. what the fuck i don't mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Segwaying. Ballet, how about you? Any final thoughts about uh, the two towers? Not anymore. <laughs> sorry, sorry to do that to you then. It is so cozy. Like yeah. for a movie that is like <laughs> full of decapitations. Such a dark movie. It yeah. is so dark, but I swear this morning I had put a I had a big blanket. I had a g- cup of tea. Oh man. Yeah. It is a perfect way to spend a Sunday. Yes. God, Nathan, how many fucking cats do you have? Uh none. Oh. Fuck, yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. Uh yeah, unfortunately. They well Huh. It's a whole thing. I can't keep them in the place I'm living. So no, that's unfortunate. Yeah, let's not I don't let's we don't have time for another dark Nathan story. <laughs> we gotta move we gotta move on. We don't, yeah. We don't need to we don't need to play the super friends theme yeah, for my, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we gotta move on my sad story time <laughs> <laughs> and now it's over so uh 
<laughs> anyway. Meanwhile, in Minas Tirith. <laughs> why don't we uh why don't we get into prop cop? And for new listeners to the show, Prop Cop is where we look at all of the different props mm-hmm. that are in the movie The Lord of the Rings, Cold in the Two Towers. And uh, we try to take one each for ourselves. Since uh, this is my pick, I'll go ahead and tell you. I had a couple written down, but the one I ultimately went with, and I don't often go with wardrobe. Uh, yeah. But Faramir's whole ranger outfit is so fucking cool. It's good. The only thing I want in addition to that, to go and complete it, is I want one of those little elvish leaf clips. Mm. Those things are so cool. I don't know why. I want, I want that whole outfit. So that's what I'm going with. I was a big fan of the purple shirt that uh, Aragorn's Ooh. rocking when he's uh, having dinner. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. 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 Well, what about you, Mally? What, what, what's your prop cop? Oh, Aragorn's elvish knife. Oh, nice. oh yes. Such a good, such a good one. Uh, Nathan? Uh, I also went with a weapon. I want Theoden's sword that has horses kissing on the hilt. Yes! <laughs> Jesus. Yes! It's good. Yeah. Theoden's a horse girl. <laughs> Weapons were a couple of my options, too. All right. Well, this is the one that this next segment, mm-hmm. I had, I don't, I don't know, I'm looking here, maybe a hundred entries into, <laughs> but bit part, um, which is, of course, where we look at all of the extras in this movie, and there are a ton, uh-huh. and uh, we recast them as ourselves to build our filmography. Uh, Nathan, how about we start with you? What is your bit part for Two Towers? Uh, right when it starts to rain dramatically, mm-hmm. uh, there's a the guy right over Theoden's shoulder rolls his eyes. Like, he just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> if that's not me, I don't know who is. All right. Uh, Mally? Oh, fuck. Uh, you go first. Ah, oh, man, there's so many to choose from. I wanted to go with the old man who let the arrow slip early <laughs> just because it's such a pivotal moment, but I feel like that's too, that's too obvious. So yeah. I'm going to go with my, my second choice, which was when they start to fire the little crossbow bar things to like push like with the ropes attached to like roll the ladders up on in Helm's Deep. Uh-huh. There's one that doesn't work so well and <laughs> the, the crossbow hits a guy that goes fucking flying. Yeah. I want to be that guy. <laughs> That's good. Uh, what about you, Melly? Yeah, fuck it. I'm going to go with the fucking Olympic orc oh. that dives into the sewer trench. <laughs> yes. Yeah. God damn. I'm, I'm going to have to fucking stretch, though, because my knee's already hurting. There's so many good extras in this movie. So many good ones. I love it. All right. Well, the reason for the season, uh, the reason we're here, 20 years later, we're going to finally find the silver lining to the two towers. Who would like to go first? Uh, you would, I think. Oh, I would. <laughs> wow. How about that? Um, okay. Well, I wrote down a couple. I would say Faramir redeemed himself mm. by not becoming his brother and following in the same footsteps. He had the opportunity to, and it probably would have solved all of his personal problems, but he chose to do the right thing and let Frodo in the ring go. So that's that's my silver lining. Uh, who else? Who's next? Merry and Pippin got to smoke all the weed in Saruman's <laughs> storeroom. Hey, right on. We need a side movie that's just half-baked with those two. Halfling baked. Go- <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I did not have that one ready. That's a good one. No, I did. I, that felt off the cuff. <laughs> what if in Return of the King, Mary and Pippin are just high as fuck the whole time? <laughs> we recut the movie. The Burn of the King. Oh, that's a good one too. Mally, what about you? Silver lining? Oh, so many kids died at Helm's Deep. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I don't think so. I well, didn't see yeah, it happen. Yeah, I don't believe it. Yeah. I guess I mean the ones in the in the in the mountains survived, yeah. but the ones on the battle, those kids are dead. <laughs> uh, Dead is still injured. I would say, as a backup here, similar to what Faramir did, uh, I feel like the Rohirrim redeemed themselves, even though they never really needed to, but mm. in the eyes of Theoden and the rest of Rohan, yeah. you know, they saved the day. Yeah, I love that. I mean, we didn't really talk about it, but yeah, Theoden and Aragorn's decision to like ride out one last time, mm-hmm. it's fucking badass as shit. And Man, the shot of just those four yeah. pile driving through all of the orcs on the yes. bridge is so good. It's so good. There's so much good stuff in that Helm's Deep battle. Yeah, the 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 orcs using the shields and marching up the ramp, mm-hmm. the them trying to repair the door as they're breaking through it. It's that battle. Oh my god! And then right when the the first orc gets hit with the arrow, and they do all, it goes full dead alive with all the Dutch angles and oh, the, yeah. the heavy breathing coming out of the 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 orcs mask. It's all good. It's all really good. Okay. Well, let's say this. Let's say at the two towers, you're uh, you're not feeling great. There's a lot of death, a lot of foreboding, ominous things on the horizon. You mm-hmm. need a pick-me-up movie alternative. Don't worry, listener. We got you covered with a double feature. So 
after you watch The Two Towers, you put this movie on. And Nathan, yeah. for you, that second movie is... Uh, yeah, I would stick with John Reese davies for another supernatural adventure and roll straight into Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Ooh, Ooh. I thought you were going to say GoldenEye. But yeah. GoldenEye's good. Oh, no, that's Hag... God damn it, that's Hagrid. That's, I get those uh, two Robbie fucking Coltrane. Mixed- yes, I get them two mixed up all the fucking time. And not supernatural. But no, no, but... Other than that, it, well, it totally lines up. I don't know. Pierce Brosnan it just looks supernatural in that movie because he's on a top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> God damn, it, I get those two mixed up all the fucking time. That's funny. God damn, it, I got to stop doing that. Uh, Mally, what about you? Pick me up. Uh, just because I just saw it yesterday, I'm gonna go Glass Onion, a Whoa. Knives Out mystery. I want to see it so bad, I, and it's good, right? Oh yeah, I fucking loved it. Yeah, I fucking hate that it's not playing anywhere near me, and I gotta wait till Netflix. Yeah, not within a hundred miles of me. Oh. It's insane. God, Florida is a waste, and I can't wait for this whole state to fall off into the ocean. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Bugs Bunny just sawing it off. I, I hope it becomes a new. It's not, but Florida should go the same way as New Menor and just fucking just go under the just get flooded, just go <laughs> out completely, just get rid. Get it's. Ugh. I'm gonna go with the obvious just because I couldn't think of a good connection. But you got to finish out the, the trilogy. Mm-hmm. Just roll right into Return of the King. And it's a good time. Prisoner of Azkaban. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's all I got, fellas. For the two towers, we did it. We sure did. Any final thoughts? Final notes? Uh, anything we missed uh, that we got to mention? Anything at all? Do not trust to hope. It has forsaken these lands. Mm, it sure has. Florida is a forsaken wasteland. <laughs> all right. Well, if uh, there's nothing else, I will say, uh, listener, if you want to give us your feedback about the two towers or the show in general, you can do so by emailing us at the severed linings playlist at gmail.com, mm-hmm. or you can DM us over on our Instagram or Twitter. Uh, if you haven't already, you can give us a follow on those two places, or you can give us a like uh, and follow on TikTok, where we post a lot of the highlights from the show. Yeah. Doing great numbers, I will yeah. say, over there, which is, I'm very thankful. So wild. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. The, the only thing I have to say is, why? I, well, that's <laughs> why. I, I had a feeling it would do pretty well on TikTok, and I guess by, my instinct was right. Great TikToks. Yeah. Jesus. The two TikToks. Mm. <clears throat> anyway, if you haven't already, go ahead and uh, subscribe, leave us a rating and some feedback. We'd greatly appreciate it. And uh, if you want to get more of the show, you can do so in our back catalog or by checking out our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. Now, next week, I believe, if I'm looking at the schedule correctly, it is our Christmas episode. (laughs) And Mally has uh, certainly made a pick for what we're talking about. Hey, I can say with 100% certainty, it is one of my choices this season it oh, is interesting. it is and you're you're gonna give us a clue for what we're talking about next week i am mary dickmas <laughs> jesus christ i i want to f- if, if you're listening to this in the past and that episode has already dropped i want to put this right out there right now mm. i have not seen it me neither i i am honestly <laughs> it was a movie that was forced upon me i have only heard <laughs> terrible things same. about this movie same so I don't I don't know how, how I would feel about it, but I guess we'll 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 talk about it next week. Sure. <sighs> All right. Well, I'm kind of kind of preparing myself. I put it on the list as a joke and then forgot to take it off. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, that's great. Great. Yay. All right. Well, that's how most of my choices end up on the schedule. <laughs> well, uh, without further ado, I'll say lastly, rest in peace, oatmeal and Boromir and Boromir. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and as always. Where was Gondor when the Westwald fell? Where the fuck were they? (laughs) Excelsior! 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 Look it up! Hello YouTube! If you've made it this far, thanks! Could you do us one more favor? Could you hit those like and subscribe buttons? Maybe leave us a comment on what you think of the show? We'd really appreciate it. Join us again next week for an all new episode. Bye!